This video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. Hello everybody, how's it going? Yes, uh, one of the, the rookie YouTubers, you know, the ones that started off on the wrong foot used the entire video of Doug Carter and Kelsey. Now they, they use the entire show on their channel as if you can just use, I mean, I know that the people that mentor him tell him that they can just use whatever video they want off of any channel instead of creating their own uh, content, right? Um, so they were playing the video um, all the way through off of my channel, and he said, well, Gray just got it. He, stole, he took it off the internet from uh, a podcast called uh, Scene of the Crime. And I said, well, um, actually, I'm part of Scene of the Crime. That's why I'm allowed to upload it. Um, hello. See, it just shows you how naive and ridiculous these people are, you know? Uh, he needs to get the hell away from who's ever talking to him and start doing his own stuff, using his own brain. Well, I, I don't even know about that, but it's, it's ridiculous, okay? So, anyways, that's what's going on right now. That's a good way to get your channel shut down, too, because you can't use other people's content like that. It wasn't used in a fair use way. It was played every second. Yeah, with no really critiquing of what was going on or anything, okay? All right, so tonight we're going to be going over a couple of different cases, and one of them is the Deanne Warner. I don't know if, I don't think she calls herself Deanne, because people call her D, so I think it's just Deanne Warner. All right, now this is a case that happened back in, I think it was uh, April, uh, late April, of last year a missing person case and it seems to have gotten so little coverage out there and it's really kind of startling how little information there is other than sort of locally they've covered it quite a bit uh, i did talk to i messaged with the daughter on facebook she gave me a number and i talked to uh greg <laughs> his name was actually greg i said hey man if you come on my show it might be tough because People call me Gary, Greg, Craig, whatever, right? So he might, uh, we have a, uh, we are planning on having him come on on Monday for the show, okay, to talk about this very same case. But we're just going to go through all of the uh, newspaper articles from the beginning of it till now, but it's not in newspapers.com, it's just on the internet. And I put all the links into the description that we'll be using tonight on the cases. The other case will be the uh, Malachia Logan. That was one of the ones, 1988, that's a cold case. That was one of the ones we were supposed to be talking about last night, okay? Now, if you saw the show earlier today, it was a pretty cool, uh, it was, well, amazing, really. It was in Oregon, down in uh, the southern part of Oregon where they had a cold case from 1978 that uh, because of the work of the detectives and how they collected the data, we're able to get a DNA sample um, all these years later in 2018, I think. And they used genetic genealogy and it led back to <coughs> a suspect, but that person had died in 1996. And they're not really a suspect, they are the killer. There is no doubt about it. They are the killer. There's no other reason for the de her, that person's DNA to be on her since she was with another person at the time. They were actually killed at the same time, hitchhiking. Okay, but in that press conference, we heard that there are uh, 
Now they have funding issues down in Southern Oregon. So I think that's what uh, one of the places I'm gonna be calling next week is to see if, you know, they said it takes them a while to raise those funds. Well, boom, it might take us a while, but at the same time, they could be raising for another case and we could be raising for one and they can get two cases done, right? So uh, that is the deal, everybody. You guys are, <laughs> you know, uh, like I said before, money doesn't grow on trees, nor does it show up on the snap of uh, a finger. You know, or you're, if I go, it doesn't, oh, look at that, you know, it doesn't happen. Okay, so, um, you know, you guys sending in your Super Chats, channel memberships, the ad revenue, which is really poor, that all builds up the funds. Like last year we had 20, uh, let's see, 22,000, 25,000, I think we got up to in the DNA fund. All right, so I'm, I'm hoping to do more than that in the fund this year and also get some money to the charities like Rain, Nickmec, and uh, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. All right, but it's up to you guys. You're you're basically my employers. So when I have shows where I work eight hours and I put them all on, and the super chats are like a hundred bucks, I always think, "Wow, that's what my boss thought of me." <laughs> yep, there we go. I took the masks off of them. Hey, thanks, Truth Sleuth. Yep. Gray Hughes Investigates. The channel that actually makes a difference. There you go. Mainly because of the freaks. I just do the show, and that's my part of it. And, you know, I'm the one that contacts everybody. <clears throat> All right, so you guys ready? to go on to the D. Ann Warner case and take a look at it. Started back in 2020. One, excuse me, 2021 in April. Let me get the uh, right place on the map here. There, there we go. It's in Michigan. I guess they're far enough east that they're actually in another time, the final, the East Coast time zone. Yarg. Oh, nope, the dogs aren't in there. Come on, get up there, Chloe. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> she's in this other bed right over here. I don't know why she's not going in there. Well, maybe one of these days. This is her right here, and this is one of the first articles I could find. It was actually on Facebook in a Crime Stoppers post. It said, Crime Stoppers of Lanawi is asking for the public's help locating D. Ann Warner, 52, of uh, Tecumseh, Michigan. D. Warner was last seen at a residence on Munger Road in Franklin Township. Lenawee County, the evening of April 24th, 2021, and early morning hours of April 25th, so, you know, 12, 31, 2 in the morning, April 25th, 2021. Dee Warner has not, has had no contact with her family and friends on phone or Facebook since she went missing. Anyone with information is encouraged to contact Crime Stoppers of Lenawee County. All right, so the numbers you can call if you just happen to be somebody out there that was like, oh, wow, yeah, I saw her or something like that. Call 517-266-6161 or 877-276-8477. All right, then two days later on May 6th, we've got a 52-year-old, uh, hold on a second. I can see a lot of zipping and unzipping will be going on. Oh yeah, 
uh, there's incognito society. Yeah, we've talked about. Uh, did you get any more information on what we were talking about there? Incognito society. All right, here we go. 52 year old Lenawee County, or maybe it's Lenawee, or I don't know how to. I'm not. I don't live there, so I don't know how to pronounce it. Missing for nearly two weeks. D. Ann Warner last seen at her home on April 24th through the 25th. Oh boy, here we go. Blue and Chloe. Uh, Crime Stoppers of Lanawi County is seeking the public's help in locating 52-year-old D. Ann Warner, I'll just say D. Warner, who was last seen on the evening of April 24th and early morning of April 25th. Warner was last seen at her home on Munger Road, and that looks like it's almost exactly the same as the last one. Then on the 11th of May, still another Facebook post. Let's see, do I just click on that or I'm not sure how to get to it. Hold on a second. I don't know how to get to that. Ah, where is it? Yeah, I want to listen to. Well, here, you can hear the uh, the attorney, the uh, sheriff talking here. Hold on. April twenty fifth. As you can imagine, it's it's tough right now for the family. Lenawee County Sheriff Troy Bevere says that they have been following up on tips daily, but still no sign of Warner. We grow more and more concerned, um, especially since Mother's Day has passed, and and uh, we got no information um she didn't reach out warner was last seen at her home on munger road in franklin township outside tecumseh michigan no phone calls or facebook activity since she went missing in the beginning it was not unusual for her to leave for a couple of days but um, at this point yes it's it's not typical for her to, to not reach out to somebody after this amount of time tuesday warner's family released the following statement we are continuing to work closely with the investigators, and we just ask that if anyone has any information, to please contact police. It goes on to say, we thank everyone for your continued thoughts and prayers. Bevere says detectives are working every day to find Warner. Any reason to believe that she might be in danger at this point? Well, just from the amount of time that's, that has passed, that's um, that's why we uh, we feel that I mean she's been missing for later is, is, eight um, months. Very important. In Tecumseh, Mackenzie Keyline, mm -hmm. thirteen ABC Action News. Man, that's crazy. Hey, uh, LM, would you unblock the moderators that you have blocked, please? Thank you. Let's just everybody. We were going to do a New Year's thing. Everybody unblock everybody. There's no reason to have anybody blocked. Hey, thanks, Eugenie, for starting the wave. It doesn't look like it. Uh, it looked like it was a wave that crashed, and all the surfers are on the beach staring at the waves, wondering when the next one will come. But, but thank you. All right, the, the 12th. Now we're on to May 12th now. Okay, here we go. And the was, search continues tonight for missing Leno the search continues tonight for missing Lenaway County woman. It has now been more than two weeks Lenaway, since anyone has seen or heard from Deanne Warner. 13 ABC's Mackenzie Keyline spoke with the sheriff and has the latest on the investigation. This is 52-year-old Deanne Warner. The wife and mother has been missing Thanks, since Kathy April Friday 25th. As you can imagine, it's it's tough right now for the family. Lenaway County Sheriff Troy Bevere says that they have been following up on tips daily, that looks but still to the no last sign one. of Warner. Do we grow more and more concerned? Lenaway County Sheriff Troy Bevere. That's the property way back there. See that, right here. So she has a house on a property of a. It's like a trucking business. It says agricultural, but it's probably. Um, I was talking to the brother. More of like a commodities thing. And uh, but you know it's a trucking business, uh, you know shipping. You know on her Facebook page she has job posts and, and so forth. Thanks Zozo and Jessica Schubach and Cheyenne Orr. Can you put them on there? <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the dogs. They're going nuts. Thanks, one sly angel. They're going crazy. 
Let me let me see what that uh, what this says. says that they have been following up on tips daily. All right. So in here it says the 52 year old wife and mother was last seen April 25th at her house on Munger Road in Franklin Township, outside Te Tecumseh, Michigan. And while Lenawee County Sheriff Troy uh, Bevier or Bev Bevier, I don't know how to pronounce that, said his department has been following up on tips. There are still no signs of Warner. Let me let me play this from the beginning. Search continues I just want to see tonight if for I missing Lunaway Thanks, County Tina woman. And it Tom. has now been more than two weeks since anyone. Well, the search continues tonight for missing Lunaway County woman. Lunaway. It has now been more than two weeks Marianne. since anyone Lunaway. has seen or heard from Deanne Warner. 13 ABC's Mackenzie Keyline spoke with the sheriff and has the latest on the investigation. This is 52 year old Deanne Warner. The wife and mother has been missing since April 25th. As you can imagine, it's it's tough right now for the family. Lenaway County Sheriff Troy Bevere says that they have been following up on tips daily, but still no sign of Warner. Do we grow more it's daily? Bevere says that they Sheriff Troy Bevere says Bevere. that they have been following up on tips daily, but still no sign of Warner. Do we grow more and more concerned, um, especially since Mother's Day has passed and and uh, we got no information um she didn't reach out order was last seen at her home on munger road in franklin township outside tecumseh michigan no phone calls or facebook activity since she went missing in the beginning it was not unusual for her to leave for a couple of days Mary but uh, at this point, yes, it's it's not typical for her to, to not reach out Tina to somebody Susser. after this amount of time tuesday warner's family released the following statement we are continuing to work closely with the investigators, and we just ask that if anyone has any information, to please contact police. It goes on to say, we thank everyone for your continued thoughts and prayers. Bevere says detectives are working every day to find Warner. Any reason to believe that she might be in danger at this point? Well, just from the amount of time that's, that has passed, that's um, that's why we uh, we feel that finding her sooner than later is is um, very important. Yeah. So down here says, as you can imagine, it's tough right now for the family. Yeah. I mean, I was telling him, I go, you know, you're always when I was talking to Greg, you know, you're, it's always when a missing person case, you don't really have a time to like breathe. Really, you're just. I mean, it's just. I think a missing person is actually worse than, especially when you know they're not missing for any possible good reason, right? Uh, it's worse than actually finding the person deceased. I mean, I know that's hard to believe, but uh, I think that if you found the person deceased early on, you'd have this horrific uh, emotions. Then it would settle down and you would, um, be able to get your life back to normal at some point, but you know you never forget it, like I said. But when they're missing, and you presume that something bad happened to them, it's absolutely, hey, thanks, you're gypsy. Uh, when you presume they're missing, and I think it's again also Mary Glaviano, when they're missing and you, you assume that something bad happened to them, and that's the most likely answer, you, um, and it's just, a nightmare because you have this horrible feeling up until they're found uh, then then the you know them being found not alive isn't as shocking it's but it does increase your feeling and then but now you have to figure out like what happened to them so then you start this whole other process of now wanting somebody to pay for it you know almost the best case scenario when there's a missing person that has been you know who's no longer alive is to is to have found them through the person who did something to them and then you have it all answered at one time and basically and you hope that they just plea out or something and then it's just over you know um it's just it it just sucks how much time families have to spend just in hell over these types of cases. I mean, it's been eight months where a mother, a wife, a sister, you know, aunt has been missing. It's crazy. Daughter. 
Anyways, uh, let me get back to this. On Tuesday, Warner's family released a statement that reads in part, We are continuing to work closely with the investigators, and we ask that if anyone has any information, to please contact police. Devere said detectives are working every day to find Warner. Any reason to believe she might be in danger at this point just because the amount of time she's been uh, gone. That's why we believe finding her sooner rather than later is very important. Well, this is in May of 2021, only two or three weeks after she went missing. So if you consider she's still missing today, then... All right, so now on uh, May 19th of 2021, search ongoing. Uh, area agencies are still searching for missing... Uh, let's see, it was... One away, I think. County woman D. Ann Warner, Sheriff Troy Bevere, told WLEN News Wednesday that they are using all resources available to them, including a helicopter, as they search the northern portion of the county. Warner from uh, Tecumseh, well, I hope I'm saying that right. Let me, let me, I actually want to say that one right. That's a... Uh, I thought it was an Indian name. Tecumseh. Tecumseh. I was almost right. All right. <clears throat> but you wonder how they say it, the locals. Right? Uh, Warner from Tecumseh was last seen as at her residence on Munger Road in Franklin Township on the evening of April 24th and the early morning hours of April 25th. D has no contact with her family and friends on the phone or on Facebook since she went missing on April 25th. What's weird is on Facebook, she ha does have a, um, hold on. So if you go to her Facebook page here, you know, she did, she made a post on April 24th and, you know, and a couple of other ones on the 24th. A man doesn't, oh, a man doesn't protect his woman because she is weak he protects her because she is important so i was reading that and i was thinking is that telling a person something or is that just she does post a lot so she could just be posting a meme and then right here there's this file thing here that that's like when you're trying to upload something from your phone or something and yeah i don't know i wonder if this has some importance here that you got this file and then it looks like it goes down to some sort of an image there but uh, yeah anyways I, th I thought that was mildly interesting there yeah she's definitely uh, aligns with me Politically, I can tell you that. <laughs> All right, so search continues for missing uh, Lenaway County woman. This is the 21st of May. Well, north of the state line, up in Lenaway County, Michigan tonight, investigators are still searching for a missing woman, Deanne Warner. She hasn't been seen or heard from in nearly a month. She said no what contact with family or friends. 13 ABC's Mackenzie Keeline joining us live now and right now. Mackenzie, we understand another massive search played out today. What happened there? Yeah, well, Lee, this was the second search this week for Deanne Warner, and the Lenaway County Sheriff's Office tells me that they did not find any sign of her, leaving investigators with more questions than answers. We really don't have any evidence to point in any particular direction. Authorities came up empty-handed after a two-day search for Deanne Warner. The 52-year-old from Tecumseh has been missing since April 25th. Tecumseh. The longer this goes on, the more concerned we become. Lenaway County Under Sheriff Jeff Ewald says they've been following up on tips and fear Warner could be in danger, sparking a joint search with several agencies, including the Michigan State Police and Cambridge Township Police. There were nine or ten different places that we searched and they averaged anywhere from three to 
20 acres. Friday, authorities focused on farmland in Cambridge Township, searching the area on foot and with canines. We just want to rule out that she's there. Um, we don't really have any leads. We don't have any uh, evidence suggesting what may have happened with her. Uh, we're just trying to cover all our bases just so we can say we did. Ewald says Warner's purse and cell phone are also missing, but so far hmm. nothing has turned up. Those in this small town are hoping for the best. They're, uh, we're just trying to cover all our bases just so we can say we did. Ewald says Warner's purse and cell phone are also missing, hmm. but so far nothing has turned up. Those in this small town are hoping for the best. That's really sad and I hope that um, her purse and cell phone are missing, but what about any of her vehicles, right? Her purse and cell phone missing is less nefarious than if her purse and cell phone were there, okay? We've seen many cases where you see their purse and cell phone still in the house, then almost certainly something really bad happened. In this case, it still could mean something bad, you know. It's, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not dramatically better, but... It's better than when the person's cell phone are there, the car's there, there's just a missing person. She is found, hopefully she's alive, and I just pray that um, she comes back home. Until then, investigators are continuing to piece this puzzle to- uh, Well, the, the land back there is just part of their, they have this business for a trucking company. Together. It's really got us uh, mystified as far as what could have happened, so that's why we're doing taking every avenue we can. And the undersheriff tells me that next week they plan to regroup and figure out where to go from here. At this point, there are no community volunteer searches planned. She's married. But if you see Deanne Warner, you're asked to call Lenway County Sheriff's Office. Lee? I mean, I hope it's not a Cheryl Coker situation. Uh, there were nine to ten different properties we searched, and they averaged anywhere from thir three to thirty acres. The family is a farming family, and they farm about three thousand acres. So we just wanted to cover all of them. Okay, so I guess maybe you know it's a commodities business too. Like uh, there, there are a lot of you can actually see on the property. Look at all the semi trucks right here. So maybe they actually take. Possession, you know, like, you know when you buy commodities, sometimes you actually have to go take the possession of the commodity and hold on to it, and then later on you can ship it once the you decide to sell it at a good price. Right. Yeah. I mean, if she doesn't have the vehicle there, then. Of course, it means that, uh, you know, if her vehicle isn't there, then then that would be that she left with uh, on her own. But, or I mean, it could be that she left on her own. Uh, but then there's also, if their vehicle is still there, then it's possible someone picked her up and took her somewhere. Right, that's obvious. I mean, you know. <laughs> I'm just talking about, you know, I'm just wondering if her car was there or not. That's all, that's all I'm doing. All right, let's see. Family is a farming family, and they farm about 3,000 acres. At this time, Ewald says they did not have a specific reason to search those fields. Well, it's interesting that they would search all the family farm fields, right? Uh, Warner's purse and cell phone are also missing, but so far nothing has turned up, according to authorities. I hope she's found, said Linda Rueda, who lives in Adrian. Hopefully she's alive, and I just pray that she comes back home. There was no sign of Warner during the searches on Friday or Wednesday, according to Ewald, and they plan to regroup next week to figure out what to do next. It really ha has us mystified as far as what could have happened, so that's why we are taking every avenue uh, we can. Hmm. If you have any information, call the uh, Lanawi County Sheriff's Office. All right, now we're going to like June 10th now. <laughs> yeah, where 
where do these people come from? Yeah, oh, it's, it's so weird to have trolls that just show up on a random night. You know, like, unbelievable. Cases are, are always tough, and this one is no exception. It's been extremely tough. More than a month has passed, and still no sign of 52 year old Deanne Warner. It's been tough on the well, That's why I was saying maybe it's a Cheryl Coker type of situation. Family, there's no doubt about it. I can't go into a store or a place where somebody doesn't know her, so she was very well known in the community. Her disappearance remains a mystery for investigators. Uh, according the to her brother, Greg, there are five generations they've lived in the same area, and she even went to high school in the area. So, uh, I mean, that's a long time, so everybody's going to know everybody. Wife and mother last seen April 24th at her home on Munger Road outside of Tecumseh, Michigan. Obviously, after this long point, she is um, entered as missing and endangered. The Lenawee County Sheriff's Office and Michigan State Police have searched hundreds of acres of farmland with drones and on foot with canines. Warner's purse also missing, but no activity on her cell phone or bank accounts. Sheriff Troy Bevere says they're suspending all searches unless there's a break in the case. Unless we get any additional information, we've pretty much exhausted all the searches. So we've we've checked a lot of the of the property. Uh, we've yes. checked a lot of the area. But like I said, we continue to take tips. We'll continue to take information. And as more people start visiting second homes for the summer season, the sheriff is asking people to take time to keep an eye out, looking for any sign of Warner. It's frustrating for the family and it's frustrating uh, April for, for all of us when there's not oh, a, a ton of information out there. She was seen late 24th and early morning. They should just say the early morning of the 25th. So early morning, 25th, you know, 12, 31, 2 in the, in the morning. Um, it becomes more difficult. So it, it is frustrating. But again, we continue to work on the case. We continue to work on any information we have. We, we don't go with, I was told, uh, Danielle, Nicole, okay? That, that doesn't do anything. If, you, if a family member told me that directly, I might believe it. All right, so here we go. The Nawi County Sheriff provides updates on D. Ann Warner's case. And then, um, so here's a couple, you know, three different sound bites right here. I would like to make it very clear that the Lenawee County Sheriff's Office is actively investigating the disappearance of D. Warner. Those locations that were identified early on by our detectives... This is June 15th. ...detectives have been searched. However, we continue to receive tips and develop information daily and investigative leads. If during our yeah, but we're talking about investigation this one other through, locations so. come to light, they will be searched just as they have been in the past. And if we need additional resources from community or the general public, we will reach out to them and we thank them for all of the information that they have provided us so far. At this point, we, we still don't have information that would change this from a missing person to a recovery case. She is still missing. We're not ruling anything out and we still need the public's tips. We really don't ever call it a recovery because a recovery assumes that we know that the person is deceased and we don't know that. There is no connection between the Warner case and the Fox case. There is no connection between the Warner case and the Fox case. Now, oh, there you go. Okay, and then there was like a, they had kind of a gap in coverage, and then it was back up uh, another clip in September, September second. Yeah, they're all over the place. Uh, Lenawi County, Michigan News talked to Lenawi County Sheriff Troy Bevere about a case that was making headlines around southeast Michigan and northwest Ohio earlier this year, but has been quiet in the media for a while. There you go. That's exactly what I noticed. Disappeared for two months. The uh, investigation is still... It's so important. You know, that's one of the things. When you have a missing person case... Law enforcement needs to be way more engaging and open with what they're doing and just sort of really 
keeping the public engaged and making them feel like they're part of something. And then you might be able to get some answers. But when you just go radio silent, and then two months later they keep saying the same thing, yeah, we just don't. Well, why weren't you keeping it in the public's eye for those two months where it was just dead silent? The uh, investigation is still actively going on. It remains an open case, and we continue to do, it it is an active investigation, and we continue to work on it uh, probably, uh, if not daily, at least two or three times a week. So, no, that's that's not really that good, you know. We continue to work on the case, and uh, at this point, it's still a a missing person case, a missing endangered person case, and and it has not been reclassified. The uh, okay. All right, so that was uh, September second, then October twelfth. Authorities continue search for Lanawi County woman missing for more than five, five months now. So this is October 12th. D. Ann Warner has been missing since April 24th in Franklin Township. You know what I thought was a joke? There missing was, for more than... There was this one outlet that had this really long, in-depth story, but as soon as you go there, it, it needed you to pay for a subscription. <laughs> Uh, Listen, everybody, if you have a news outlet out there, you can't have it where it's behind a paywall, okay? Like on my channel, people are channel members and whatever, you know, send super chat. But you can still watch the video. It's right there. I mean, you know. But they had a paywall on a missing person case. Who in the hell would have something like that? (laughs) I mean, what, what made you do the article in the first place? I mean, geez. Then five months. Tonight, the FBI, Lenawee County Sheriff's Department, and state police are searching homes, barns, and hundreds of acres of farmland for D. Warner. Warner went missing on April 24th, along with her phone and her purse. There have been no sightings of her, no phone usage, and no attempts to use those credit cards. Our Mara McDonald is at her family's massive Franklin Township farm, where police started digging on the property tonight. Jason Kimberly, they were digging in two spots. So far, no sign of Warner yet, but they're not done. A team from the Lenawee County Sheriff's Department, the FBI and the MSP cordoned off the Warner family home, setting up multiple command posts and searching both the house, the barn, and then going over the hundreds of farm acres with dogs and ground penetrating radar. After hours of the search, they brought in a backhoe to start digging up locations agents had marked. Really what this is is kind of a culmination of all the work that we've been doing over the summer. So um, we've been pretty much following up on every every lead and all the information. Nobody has seen or heard from 52-year-old Dee Warner since April 24th. Her phone and credit cards have not been used. The sheriff already did a large ground search for her when she originally went missing. Yeah. I mean, to me it sounds like she was abducted and somebody or something happened to her uh, that was non- you know, like, I don't know. Sounds like something happened to her and she was removed from the home and uh, her purse and her cell phone were taken. Probably the cell phone was probably turned off because here's the thing is the last phone, her last uh, ping from her phone must have occurred in that general area right there because that's why they're searching all around and pop, and then it kind of leads them to go, well, maybe it's on another property because if she had taken off with somewhere in a non-nefarious way with her cell phone, it would be on and it would have pinged in some completely you know, distant location, giving them a reason to go search elsewhere. But that's not what happened. So now you got to think, well, the, the phone was turned off. You know, most people know about cell phones now. Was it turned off by herself because she didn't want to be tracked? Was there anything going on at all? I mean, it sounds like even up right up till the 24th on Facebook, she was active, posting and everything like that. It doesn't sound like she's ready to take off for eight months. M-U-N-T-S, all right? It just doesn't sound like that at all. He brought back reinforcements today. Why now? The fields have been cleared of their crops and agents saw something on radar that had them digging, although with no luck 
So far, no sign of Warner. We're, uh, I know it's weird that they're even digging at all. That means they to come see found some Lenore ground County, that looked Adrian, unusual or something. Especially you don't just to dig. And uh, so a lot of people um, knew D. And so this really hits close to home. Take a look. I want to show you something. You can see we've still got Sheriff's Department personnel out here. They are going to be maintaining this scene oh, no. he said for new at least the next D. two to three days. Not no. That's because uh -oh. they're not done looking out here. Expect everybody to be back in the morning. We are in Franklin Township. Amara McDonald, Local 4. Yeah. Missing for more than five months tonight. The Authorities cordoned off the Warner family home on Monday, setting up multiple command posts and searching the house, barn, and then going over the hundreds of farm acres with dogs and ground-penetrating radar. Let's see. Yeah, they did a large ground search when she was originally reported missing. See, that means that her phone pinged in that area. But what I'd like to know is, uh, what was the time that the last ping happened? And then, and then if the phone's not, you know, because you could have, I mean, here's another thing, another possibility. I mean, it's ominous, but something could have happened, been done to her and her buried with the phone itself. And maybe the phone was on and the phone died and they're checking the entire property because she could still be on the property. See, um, so that's one of the possibilities that they might be looking there. You know, her purse and her purse doesn't ping, right? So it could be your phone and purse. Um, yeah, it's interesting that are in the ground somewhere. Thank you, Jessica Schubach. Yeah, the earlier show was uh, a little bit uh, better for the uh, Super Chats. Well, sometimes when they put one of those ground penetrating radars over the ground, they just look for an anomaly and then they'll dig. Doesn't mean that they saw something. I mean, it means they saw something, but it doesn't mean that's a body or anything. So um, they're digging there because they know that her phone pinged on. Uh, this is what I believe, that the last pings of her phone were on that property. That either means somebody turned off her phone and then abducted her and took her somewhere. Or maybe she wasn't alive and took her somewhere. We don't know. You know, perhaps strangled or something of that nature where it doesn't leave a lot of forensic information and then put in a car, the, f the cell phone turned off, and that would look like the last ping was on the property, so therefore she could be on the property, put somewhere. So, you, you know, you have a couple options here. You know, you've got, well, there's three options. One, she turned off her cell phone intentionally and left with somebody forever and uh, didn't want to be tracked, uh, but never used her credit cards again so there would be no reason for her ever to have brought the purse with her. So that doesn't make any sense. So I'm just going to wipe that one out. The next one would be that somebody did something to her, took her purse uh, and phone to make it look like she left, but also turned it off so the last ping was on that property. Or somebody did something to her on the property and placed her body somewhere around in the area in the ground with the phone and the purse. So I'm, it's only, I think it's only going to be one of those two at the end there. Because if you, why would you bring your purse if you're never going to be using anything that's in it? Just to make it look like you're leaving and then, I don't know. I just don't think that's got very good odds. Oh yeah? <laughs> it's a good show. The one earlier, you guys should have been there. Bevere already did a large ground search when Warner was originally reported missing. He brought back reinforcement Monday after the fields had been cleared of their crops. And yeah, so they, they had to wait. Because at first, in you know April, you're growing plants and you are you know, trying to grow it for a harvest. 
So they had to wait until all the way to like October when you start clearing out like the cornfield and everything. And now there's just ground and they searched it again. All right. And we got another one on the 12th. D. Ann Warner still missing after law enforcement searches her Franklin Township home. See, now that picture right there is on her property, and I can show you where that one is. It's, I think it's just like that. So, see the silo at the end, this building, then this one, and that's right like that. Boom, boom, boom. And it also makes sense because that's where somebody driving by would you know like the news media would pull over and get out of their car and there'd be crime scene tape all around the and now look how nice there's a really nice house i mean you don't really see properties that look like this too often where you've got a completely like a a, a beautiful home looks like they have a nice little area over here for animals and maybe even i don't know if horses or what but uh then this entire fleet of trucks and you know they they do commodities and um, you know agricultural shipping right so probably I'm kind of thinking it's more of the commodities angle now because it's kind of like if you purchase you know June orange juice or something and it doesn't hit you got to actually take possession of it maybe you store it and then find a better price at some point and then you sell it I, I don't know you know I'm not an expert at all so you know uh, I used to actually I uh, was a trucking broker in college though for a part-time job what a crazy job that is most people don't know what a trucking broker is now, a trucking broker you you find a load out there that somebody needs shipped and then you find a a trucker that's it may be in the area needs a ride back to where they're from and hopefully you can match up a trucker that uh, is heading in that direction and then you go over there and you sort of uh, set up a deal where you pay the trucker a certain amount and the shipper has a certain amount and you get the different the difference there see you know how that works just pure business right there yeah she doesn't sound like I mean if you go to her Facebook page she's got all kinds of Cool posts. Everybody likes her and gets along really well with their kids. You know, I don't see much about. I, there are a few pictures of her and her husband on there, so I don't know. Not a, not a lot of extra pictures, but Deanne Warner still missing after law enforcement searches her Franklin Township home. Uh, let's see. Deanne Warner is still missing. Law enforcement officials on Tuesday completed a search that began Monday at the home and farm of the Franklin Township woman who had been missing since late April. Uh, Lenawee County Sheriff deputies were joined at Warner's home at the corner of Munger Road and Carson Highway by personnel from the FBI, Michigan State Police. Hmm, so this is, they're picking up, uh, you know, getting some different resources in there. This is October 12th, so it's only three months ago now. I didn't like the job at all, Jen. Yeah. I didn't like it at all. <laughs> it was, you know, but it was mildly interesting. Um, one of the kids is pretty young. She had a one child when she was in her 40s for sure. She was only seven years old not too long ago. She's 52. So, you know, she must have been 45-ish. Uh, the extensive search utilizing a vast number of personnel, canines, and uh, ground sonar did not locate D. Warner. Investigators will be evaluating information that was obtained during this search, and the investigation is ongoing. Investigators were at the Warner home until, you know, I wonder if they were actually able to triangulate where her phone was on that night. Doesn't seem like there'd be a ton of cell phones out here, towers out here, though. Let's see. Hold on. Let's see. What's the name of this town here? There it is. All right. 
So hold on a second. Alright, so there's actually a tower right here. Hold on. I don't think it's right there. Kind of like right around in this area. Is that it? Yep, there's a tower right there. God, I'm good at this. <laughs> Look at that. There's a cell tower right there. And, and then another one. Alright. And there's... Yeah, so I see this road right here. Down. And then like one. There's got to be a tower right over here somewhere. One, two. Yeah, I'm just looking at this uh, cell tower map thing here. Hold on. Shepherd Road. The other one I just eyeballed it. Shepherd Road and let's see where Shepherd Road is. Yeah, Shepherd Road. I knew I was right around this area. There it is. And there's like a Wolf Creek, Ronnie Road. Ah, hold on. Now I gotta start this over again. Shit. Yeah, there's definitely towers right around the area, so I'm just trying to figure out if it can be triangulated. Yeah, so we got that one. Yeah. I can see that road. And then there's another one almost like Seems like almost right by their house, almost. Right on a creek that's coming up in the... Oh, yeah, it's right next to their house. <laughs> it says, uh, it's the same, that's their address. It actually has it listed right there. And then there's a cell tower right off of a creek that is God, it's right next to their home. There's like a PL Deer Studios. But it does have their house right there near an intersection. says there's a well maybe that's even the intersection right next to there it's this creek right here and it goes in and apparently there's a tower somewhere right there it is right there look at that man they, they can there's another tower so that one's right next to their home there and you've got this one man they probably triangulated that right into their backyard. <laughs> I mean, like, 
Wherever they were digging is where her phone was at some point. And there's actually some more over here. There's one right in that area. There it is, right there. And you know how you need like three miles on a cell phone. So let's see, from that house. Yeah, look at that. Those are right there. That's a two. All they go to three, three miles right there. So those two are good. And then there's another one right there. So four. You could really get a good, some good triangulation out here. Why are you guys talking about the fly? What's going on? What what happened? Jesus. What's got? What does the fly have to do with anything we're talking about? <laughs> Come on, you guys. Man. Yeah. Look at this one now. Look how close that one is. That thing is probably what? Oh, that's not what I was trying to do. Yeah, it's not even a half mile right there. Yeah, well, this one and this one would make that something that they could really figure out, like, where that phone was on that property. So they were, like, digging around over here somewhere. And then there's this whole wooded area over here they were looking at. And then there's another one just outside of it right there. There's also... Uh, I think there's even another one just right down here somewhere. Yeah, actually, it should be right in here. Right there, I can see it. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. They got a ton of cell towers out in that rural area. That's crazy. Look at that. So one, two, three, four, just right around there. So they really had good cell tower coverage, and then it goes on and on and on. I mean, it's, there's a lot of them. I mean, look at look at this. I'll show you this in a second. Look at how many cell towers are kind of in a in the general area there. So that's the that's the area right there. To come uh, with the, the name of the town now, I can't remember the town, but look at all those. All right. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to put myself in jail because we're really struggling tonight. All right. So. Yep, we, we've got our goals. Even with the earlier show, we're still way behind. I thought that would have been a, a good way to get a little bit ahead of the poor knights. But, uh, Gray? Gray, you're so mean. <laughs> you wouldn't even tell about the flies. Okay, now i got to tell you about the flies. While I'm in prison, okay? How unfortunate. All right. Uh, anyways, I'll tell you the fly story while we're in prison. Or maybe if I get out of prison, I'll tell you the fly story. I don't know how we got onto the fly story. I don't know what it has to do with this one, but we're going to get right back to this case right after that. Jeez, you guys... For bosses, you guys are... Whew. Yeah, I'll tell the one later. Yeah, that might that might help out get to get get a walk to the door. Okay, that's the bribe to get to the door. <laughs> fly out of there. Okay. Yeah. So the fly story goes like this. All right, everybody. Um, we had a. Uh, now we seem to have a lot of flies flying around in the backyard. It turns out later. Thank you, Amber Maiden, Billy Juliana, Sack and Fox Nanny. Delva Johnson, and I'm staying in prison until the fly story is told. Thank you, Kathy Frydenmaker. 
and Chrissy Paradis, <laughs> Delva Johnson. <coughs> hey, all right. One more month of the end of Grady Judd. All right, you're going to be, you're going to get the star on it. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Does Mag's uh, cat eye donation trump the the fly story? <laughs> I think you might have to cover your ears, Mag. <laughs> People paid good money to hear the... <laughs> That's funny. Oh, uh, thank you very much, though. Thank you. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, so it turns out uh, my wife used... Uh, manure fertilizer in the entire backyard for everything she didn't really know you know she just thought it was going to be i mean i'm sure it's good fertilizer but it also attracts flies so we had a bunch of flies i built a uh, well i didn't build a damn thing i bought a fly trap that has this juice that you pour into the bottom of the fly trap with a lid on top that has holes in it and the flies go in and they get trapped in the Okay, Mag, uh, give me give me three minutes, Mag. It'll be done. There was holes on the top of the uh, the jar, right? So the flies fly in and they get trapped in the water and so forth. But it turned out there was like 500 flies in that thing. So there was about 10 or 20 of them just kind of lingering around on the surface. But I wanted them dead too. So I came up with this, uh, I thought, and still do, that it was a great plan by... Put uh, duct tape over all the holes. Thank you, Mountain Jam 71. I put duct tape over the holes, and my idea to kill the flies would then be to put that into the microwave. Of course, I put it on some um, paper towels. So I put it in the microwave for about 15 seconds, and lo and behold, all the flies were dead. So proud of myself. Then I took out a strainer and dumped the entire container of flies into the, into the strainer, and, you know, a couple of them stayed in the jar or whatnot. And then I brought that over to the toilet and, you know, knocked off all the flies into the toilet and flushed them down. Boom. And I was able to keep all that wonderful juice to kill the all the rest of the flies, okay? Then, uh, so then I went over to the sink. My wife's doing dishes in the other sink, and she's just wondering, what in the hell are you doing? <laughs> and so uh, at that point, I didn't really know, but... Uh, I put the lid back on it, and here's here's a here's something to tell the manufacturers of this uh, fly juice. If you put it in the microwave for a few minutes, it turns into the or even just 15 seconds, it turns into the greatest fly catching juice in the history of mankind. There were flies coming in that aren't even from this continent getting into that jar it was the next jar put there filled all the way to the brim and flies were still trying to get into it okay uh, so yeah I thought it worked I thought it was a pretty creative idea you know a lot of you don't seem to appreciate it that much <laughs> but uh, hey it worked out all right all right, now I can get out of jail. Thank you. I think you, you wanted to put me back in jail after that, though, right? Fly juice. <laughs> look, look at Mag's uh, sick face there. And, and more, yep. Poop, fly, sick. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I don't care about killing bugs at all. Yeah. Uh, the only time that I ever supported Obama as a president was when um, he tried to, he was in an interview with somebody and he killed a fly and he was like, yeah, do you see how quick that was? And PETA got upset about it. They went, well, I mean, you could have caught the fly and let it go outside. And I was like, ah, that, what a load of shit. I mean, give me a break. All right. You guys don't care at all when a human dies, but if it's a fly... Oh, you could have nurtured it back to health. Yeah, give me a break. Wait, uh, uh, you never heard that story, uh, Billy Juliana? <laughs> and you still use the strainer? Oh, yeah, well, you just wipe it off, put it in the dishwasher. 
No, it it works. Uh, no, you come on. Do you guys not trust your dishwasher? My God, of course you rinse it out, put it in the dishwasher, and then it, it, it kills everything. Oh God. I kill every spider, every mosquito. I think that's how most normal people are. You know, if you if you, if you actually give a shit about the life of a mosquito or a fly, let me just tell you something. There's something wrong with you. Nobody else, okay? Are you sending me back to jail, Zozo? <laughs> I got so mean again? Is this the is this going to be the fly fun to get me the hell out of there? <laughs> oh yeah. You know you know what I hate is the hypocrisy of the PETA people. You know these PETA people are the, are the types that uh, they'll catch a they'll find a a wounded bird on the ground and they'll take it home nestle put it on their hand and, and share that with every single person out there. I don't even know what this is. I gotta go. Yeah, so what they'll do is they'll they'll put it on Facebook and give everybody an update. Look at how look how Gertrude's doing today, everybody. Look at my bird. Look at look at him. A picture after picture every day. And then two months later, the first journey of the bird back into the wilds as it takes off oh look at that everybody every moment is in a journal right every second of that is in a journal <laughs> come on Maggie you didn't really say that right come on <laughs> okay Mag's husband said no way, you have to that's bullshit. You throw away the strainer and the dishwasher. Oh god. <laughs> I know it might have seemed like that, but we really did a great job of cleaning it. Alright, listen. So anyways, you got this person holding the uh, the bird just acting like, oh look at me everybody, getting all the applause from all the other wackos that work for PETA and, and such. And he, guess what, everybody? These same pedo wackos, <laughs> pedo wackos have cats that at, at night go out and absolutely like serial killers kill as many birds and mice and other things as possible. Yet they don't care about that because you know what their answer always is? Well, that's because they're doing what they do naturally. It's okay. Well, the first thing you do is you turn to them and say, well, you know what? Flies are not indigenous to the United States, right? Just, I mean, cats. Did I say flies? God, man, you guys got me all twisted. Cats are not indigenous to the United States. Um, house cats. So, yes, you do have um, cougars. You do have um, bobcats, pumas, those kind of things, uh, lynx. But there are no house cats. So every time a house cat kills anything, it's a death that shouldn't have happened had they not been here. They are responsible for the extinction of some mammals. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, God. All right. You, you guys might be right. Maybe we should have thrown away the strainer. I wasn't thinking about it, though. Now, the microwave kills every single damn thing that's in it, okay? You guys are mean. I'm going to throw you in jail. How do I do that? On the way to class, she put it in her backpack and kept it in, kept it through class, eventually healed it. Ah, oh, that's so wonderful. And then she grew up later with a house cat that kills three a night. <laughs> oh god yeah yeah even animals that you hate when a cat's got one of those cornered whew, wow yikes yeah PETA's just a they're just a hypocritical pile of crap you know just fake phony people they don't give a shit about anything you know 
when you when you talk about yeah, I had fish for dinner. Oh, how dare you! Okay, we're getting back to the the case now, though. Thanks for the uh, the break there. Yes, uh, Mag, tell your <laughs> tell your husband. Yes, I, I I now don't believe it was the greatest. Um, technique in the world but it was something that crossed my mind and it seemed to work pretty well <laughs> there wasn't one living fly in that jar when I was done with it now that is something that is something <laughs> how's it going <laughs> tell my uh, we'll have Mary Lou sing a uh, happy birthday next year or whatever it is. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> no, it was metal. It was a metal strainer. Oh, was the was the strainer plastic? Very unhealthy for the fly. Yes, I heard it can make you sterile, Courtney Rob. Remember that? Yeah. Remember that craziness? All right, let's get back to this. So this next one is on October 13th here. Now we got the Oxygen Network picking something up here. There we go. Missing Michigan woman's home and surrounding property scoured as search intensifies months after the vanishing. The rural property of a missing Michigan woman who vanished nearly six months ago was excavated by investigators this week in an effort to dig up any clues that could assist in the search. Uh, D. Warner, 52, uh, who <coughs> she goes by D. It sounds like I don't. I, don't, I think the Ann is just a middle name. Who was last seen alive at her home in Franklin County, Michigan, vanished sometime during the evening of. See, here's the thing: when they say this, I think this is an unknown thing here. She vanished sometime during the evening of April 24th and the early morning hours of April 25th. So I think when we see that, that's the time frame that they have the pings on the phone. And there isn't anybody that actually saw her in the late night of 24th and the early morning of the 25th. That's just when her phone... And, you know, it would be interesting if they have the phone moving around on the property during that time. Since going missing, Warner hasn't contacted friends or family by phone or social media. It's unclear if foul play contributed to her disappearance, police said. As part of the ongoing investigation into the disappearance of Franklin Township resident D. Warner, the Lanawi County Sheriff's Office is conducting another search of her residence, and the surrounding property. But see, that's probably after they got cell tower information. Attempt to gather information into her whereabouts. On Monday, FBI agents could be seen scouring fields surrounding Warner's property using high-tech ground sonar technology and canine units. A backhoe was also utilized to dig up curtain, uh, cer uh, curtain certain areas which Investigators um, had marked in their efforts. So that means they probably, with the ground penetrating radar, saw anomalies and then went and dug those spots. But no signs of the missing woman were uncovered. The extensive search, utilizing a vast number of personnel, canines, and ground sonar, did not locate D. Warner. It's unclear what specific evidence law enforcement was hoping to unearth during the search. Officials said they planned to... Yeah, I mean, it could have just been her phone was buried on that property as well, right? And then she was taken. That would make it even harder to locate her. Uh, Bevere explained that search unit had waited for the summer harvest to be completed and for crops to be cleared from nearby fields before executing a map sweep of Warner's r rural property. We thought that this was a very prudent time to do an even more thorough search. The sheriff's office also disclosed that radar picked up 
on something during their search this week which led to an uh, to an effort this is kind of a, uh, this is kind of a culmination of the work that we've been doing over the summer Bevere also told WDIV so I think they the cell phone investigation and really marking down where they think that phone was and then they waited to then search those areas where that phone pinged when the crops died down so it's interesting that they're searching where there were crops right because uh, you know hopefully you know if they were looking in the crops on the property that'd be pretty weird I mean you've got uh, I guess there, this is probably some crops back here wouldn't that be weird if her phone was pinging around in this area early in the morning? But it could just be that they were investigating all of their other properties and thought they would go search those too. The Michigan State Police, Michigan Department of Natural Resources, and the FBI assisting in the case. If you have any information, call Detective Kevin Greca at 517-264-5364. Or you can send put it send a tip in to um, uh, Crime Stoppers anonymous tip that they didn't even say where. I guess you just go. To the, I guess there's a link you can click on, but I don't have that. All right. So that was October. And then a month later, I think we start hearing a little bit more from family members. the latest on a search for a missing woman from Lenawee County. Deanne Warner was last seen in April. Tonight, her family is Lenawee. speaking out for the first time Lenawee. since her disappearance. 13 ABC's Kayla Molander is live in the studio with the family's plea for justice. Alexis Deanne Warner was 52 years old when she disappeared in April. Since then, her family has stayed out of the public eye, looking desperately for any clue into her whereabouts. But tonight, Warner's brother Greg spoke out for the first time. Greg Hardy describes his sister, Deanne Warner, as full of personality. Social butterfly, so to speak. It was friends with, tried to be friends with everybody, tried to know everybody. Hardy also uses the past tense about his sister, who's been missing since April 25th. I, I honestly don't believe that my sister's alive. And it's painful to say that, but I believe it's true. Over the last month... I mean, you would think that they would have security cameras on that property. They don't have street view, though, for us to look at, but... You'd think with all the trucks and it's a business that there would be security cameras. The FBI, Michigan State Police, and other law enforcement agencies yeah, see, have used sonar, dogs, and helicopters over hundreds mm. of acres of farmland looking for the missing woman. Hardy says that despite these efforts, law enforcement has been tight-lipped about the case. Yeah, let's look at that. Where, where would that be being dug? It's a sideways like a sideways barrel that was on there like a silo that was on its side almost did they turn that one over as that despite these efforts law enforcement has been tight-lipped about the case hmm. that's on the grass Is that the spot? That's the only barrel that's turned. Kind of looks similar. Doesn't have that little green. Let me look at a different month. You know, it's crazy. That's actually March of 2021. That is one month before she went missing right there. That, that shot right there. And that's interesting, but got the same color and that and that thing on the top of it can you hold on one second
Sorry about that. You know, it kind of looks like that's the right spot there. I think it is, actually. See that little vehicle right there? Whatever that is, I think I see that right here. Okay, so they're digging right in that shot. They're digging probably right here. So that was where one of the digs was, right here. It's kind of interesting. Way over there, huh? Hmm. So he still has questions about what happened the night his sister disappeared. On Saturday night, Hardy hosted a vigil for his sister. Well-wishers flooded the family's farm, where Hardy broke his silence for the first time since Warner vanished. I have failed to speak out before because I didn't want to interfere with the investigation, but I feel it's important to clarify a few things. Hardy believes rumors of his sister just running off in the middle of the night have impeded the investigation. It is my opinion. Well-wishers flooded the family's farm, where Hardy broke his silence. I think that's the uh, individual I was talking to. Yeah, he's, re he's a really nice guy. For the first time since Warner vanished. I have failed to speak out before because I didn't want to interfere with the investigation, but I feel it's important to clarify a few things. Hardy believes rumors of his sister just running off in the middle of the night have impeded the investigation. It is my opinion that very valuable time was lost while the authorities pursued the unlikely story that Dee left without any car, without even a note to a family member saying goodbye, which would not be her character at all. Family members tell 13 ABC that Warner was in a fight with her husband the night she disappeared. Yeah, boy. See, I was just, I was the whole time I've been thinking it was a Cheryl Coker incident. And uh, I think that's what, you know, now that's what I think's going on. Okay, so when we get Greg on Monday night, I think that's where we're going to be. You know, I think that's the direction it would be most likely. I don't know how much he can say or anything like that, but I'd like to know more about the fight and stuff like that. But, you know, this is where my... I, I've been going, as soon as you hear the case, you know, very beginning, you look at it and you go, this sounds like a Cheryl Coker type of situation. Same kind of, you know, like out in the middle of nowhere-ish. So let me rewind it again. To a family member saying goodbye, which would not be her character at all. Family members tell 13 ABC that Warner was in a fight with her husband the night she disappeared. A little before 8, a How friend came that? over to pick up the couple's daughter oh. so they could work out their issues. Then around 11... Oh, go oh God. Wait, what, what, how come the police th thought she just took off? See, here's the thing, everybody. Listen, police. Talk to the families. They know how their loved one is. They know if it's out of character. And whatever their answers are, that's what you go with. Not what you, oh, we see this all the time. You guys do that all the time. This is horrible now. See, now it's, the fight was so bad that she must have called a friend that went over to the house to remove the two young daughters that are living there and, um, so that they could work out their issues and she just disappeared. That's not even a red flag, Amber. That's a freaking, uh, like a, a missile or something. I mean, that is, that is the answer to the case, right? Now, he'll, he'll say that they got in an, an argument and she stomped off mad somewhere. You know, but really? What, how come her cars are all there then? I, I mean, uh, well, he went, he, yeah. All communication stopped and now we'd like to we gotta, we gotta do, the, we gotta do this part night, have impeded the investigation it is my opinion that very valuable time was lost while the authorities pursued the unlikely story that d left without any car without even a note to a family member saying goodbye which would not be her mm, character at all nightmare. family members tell 13 abc that warner was in a fight with her husband the night she disappeared a little before eight, a friend came over to pick up the couple's daughter so they could work. Yeah, just a daughter. Her daughter's like seven years old. It's a, uh, you know, she's at, she, I think she has other kids, though, I believe. 
Yeah, she has one daughter that's been married already. I talked to her. So she has other kids that are older. Uh, but they had one, one kid's only seven years old. And I think that's the one that um, a friend came to pick up. Man, that's just Family members tell terrible. 13 ABC that Warner was in a fight with her husband the night she disappeared. A little before eight, a friend came over to pick up the couple's daughter so they <laughs> could work out their the issues. <laughs> then around 11, all communication stopped. And now we'd like to wow. at least have her remains and bring some closure for the family. See, he's saying we, we'd at least ha like to have her remains because he knows he's not this guy, um, Greg here. He knows his sister and he knows she isn't just going to take off. And so after eight months, he knows that something bad's happened to her. OK. Um, and man, that means the fight was really bad. So bad that she called a friend. I mean, tell me how many of you have called a friend to take your kid because you've gotten in a mild fight at home. Uh, there's Nobody does that, right? This was a, a really bad fight. She calls a friend to come pick up their one daughter. Then the friend comes over, gets the daughter. And then at 11 o'clock, uh, there's no more communication from her at all. Okay, so that that's crazy, right? And we also know that they're saying that she was, they're looking at the 25th early morning. That's because her phone was still round, around and about on that property pinging at that point. Oh, sorry, let me. 13 ABC did reach out. 13 ABC yeah. that Warner was in a fight with her husband the night she disappeared. A little before eight, a friend came over to pick up the couple's daughter so they could work out their issues. Then around 11, all communication stopped. And now we'd like to at least have her remains and bring some closure for the family. Yeah. 13 ABC did reach out to Warner's husband for his reaction. We called the number listed for his business and no one answered this evening. Warner's family is asking for anyone with information to share it with authorities. They say no tip is too small when they're looking for a loved one. So we'll have some information on our website on how you can make a report to I wonder whose idea it was though. It'd be interesting. Yeah. I mean, you know how this probably went down. He probably got so angry that she called a friend. Now the friend knows that they were in this argument. And how dare you send our daughter away? And he just went nuts, right? Or wouldn't it be crazy if he's the one who called to make sure that there was no witness around? Investigators. Yeah. Reporting live in studio, Kayla Molander. I, I have a feeling she's the one that called. She didn't want her daughter to see that. But you never know, right? Got, got a couple options out there. Well, the daughter knew about the fight, too, right? All right. Man, that's just unbelievable. I kind of was thinking that something like this might show up in an article somewhere. Man. And they have all kinds of farming stuff. I mean, if he knows what he's doing, he could probably easily. Yeah, let, let's play that. Uh, by far the call of duty that you folks have done to be here, my sister would definitely be impressed. Can you guys hear this? Uh, throughout this investigation or this missing person of seven months, I've not made any kind of a public statement. We've been working diligently behind the scenes to try to help find my sister. But at this time, I decided it's time that some things were clarified. And so I want to make it clear that this statement is, is a, that I'm making tonight is the one of me that I'm making personally. Um, I have failed to speak out before because I didn't want to interfere with the investigation, but I feel it's important to clarify a few things. And after an extensive amount of time and money spent, uh, and many calls of duty by many people, tips, people calling, helping, doing all kinds of things. It's been truly amazing how many people have participated in trying to find D. There have been people from all across the country, believe it or not, who have tried to participate 
And for all of you, I say a big thank you. So the big question for me has been, and wanted to clarify is, what really happened on the fateful night of April 24th and the early morning hours of April 24th? Let me turn down my music. <clears throat> There's no question, unfortunately, it was a, a toxic domestic fight going on between Dee and Dale Warner, Todd Nerick, Terry Nerick, Terry Nerick's wife. That's documented by text messages that I've had to view. Wait, what now? But on the fateful night, I didn't want to interfere with the investigation, but I feel it's important to clarify a few things. And after an extensive amount of time and money spent, uh, and many calls of duty by many people, tips, people calling, helping, doing all kinds of things. It's been truly amazing how many people have participated in trying to find D. There have been people from all across the country, believe it or not, who have tried to participate. And for all of you, I say a big thank you. So the big question for me has been, and wanted to clarify, is what really happened on the fateful night of April 24th and the early morning hours of April 25th? There's no question, unfortunately, it was a, t a toxic domestic fight going on between Dee and Dale Warner, Todd Nerick, Terry Nerick, and Terry Nerick's wife. That's documented by text messages that I've had to view. Wow, how's that happening? Four people? This is not a one off situation, folks. Unfortunately, the domestic problem had gone on probably too long, and it continued on throughout the day on Friday. The difference this time is that the intensity of this domestic dispute between D and Dale had elevated to a point which seemed of no return. In the late afternoon hours of April 24th, D had become overwrought and upset to the point where she had become very ill, literally becoming physically ill throughout this this dispute that was taking place. He shared her emotion. He had become overwrought. The difference this time is that the intensity of this domestic dispute between Dee and Dale had elevated to a point which seemed of no return. In the late afternoon hours of April 24th, Dee had become overwrought and upset to the point where she had become very ill, literally becoming physically ill throughout this, this dispute that was taking place. He shared her emotion, both by text and verbally, with her family members and Amy Alexander. Amy Alexander understood the stress that Dee was under and offered to take Angelina mm, there you go. to her home to spend the night to relieve some pressure from Dee. Amy picked Dee, uh, Angelina up at 7.42 p.m. on Saturday night the 24th. And shortly after that point, she and Dale, according to Dee's texts, we're going to talk things through. <clears throat> At that point, no one else was around. Dee's phone did not transmit any messages after, sometime after 11 p.m. on Saturday night the 24th. Dee was discovered missing approximately 9 a.m. on April 25th by Raquel, who had come there for breakfast. Where was Dale? Dale Warner claimed to know nothing about where Dee was when asked by family members looking for Dee on Sunday morning. Hmm. During the late morning hours and up through about noon. Oh, shit. By evening on April 24th, when Dee could not be found, I approached Dale and asked him what was, what was going on. He proceeded to give me a story 
about how Dee had vanished without a car, without taking Angelina, without anything at all. And quite frankly, I considered it a, co a concocted story. This... The other part that would really hamper the investigation That's too bad. was Dale Warner's continued claim and concocted story about the fact that she had left and gone somewhere, somehow, some way. Uh, hard to put that together when she didn't take her car, didn't take Angelina, didn't tell anyone anything or any of that. It becomes very hard. It is my opinion that very valuable time was lost. Well, and so what you'd also do is you would check her cell phone to see if she made any calls for somebody to pick her up or any text messages, and I bet you there's none. So how would she have left? Just kind of walked off into oblivion? Well, the authorities pursued the unlikely story that Dee left without any I'm car. Like, you'll have to send it again, Brother Speed. I have no idea. Even a note to a family member saying goodbye, which would not be her character uh, I, at all, you know. as I'm sure most of <laughs> I, I can't go back and find it. So Her text messages that the authorities had access to showed she was in a horrible domestic situation at the time. There was nothing indicating she was leaving, but rather she was planning on confronting Dale when he returned home around 8 p.m. that Who night. Who are these other people, Todd and... Uh, don't they know something? <laughs> I mean, they were there, right? A little bit of moisture out here. He's a really nice person. I mean, it was a cool phone call. Like we just Regarding the investigation, furthermore, the authorities were reluctant to even interview many family members early in the investigation. It, it appeared they were only concentrating on the unlikely idea that Dee took off without taking her car or Angelina. That was very disturbing to many of us who knew that some of these things just weren't normal and they needed to be discussed and needed to be investigated. As such, extremely valuable time was lost during that period of time when we were, when they were chasing these crazy ideas regarding where Dee may have gone. It has been extremely frustrating trying to work with the detectives and the sheriff's department on this case. Yeah, he's going to be on the show the on Monday. The lack of meaningful communication, the lack of urgency, the lack of accountability, in my mind, is unacceptable. And it is, uh, creates a huge hardship on the family. I've never even heard about, about this. this. I want to thank you again all for Jesus. coming. Uh, Isn't that ridiculous? I mean, this story, have any of you heard of this, really? I mean, most of you. I'm sure somebody of you will... May have stumbled upon it, but uh, I mean, it's so weird. Why isn't this one out there? I mean, Cheryl Coker wasn't that big, but a lot more people knew about that one. Uh, let's see. That was the brother. Uh, maybe we'll go to the, uh, the 20th. Yeah, I think I've, I've heard all I really need to hear um, in terms of from the newspaper, though. I mean, it's kind of obvious at this point. Uh, let's see, during a vigil, Warner's, uh, on November 13th, her brother Greg Hardy gave a public statement regarding the ongoing search. Um, Hardy said he gave his statement to clarify rumors and innuendos. Anytime you have something like this that takes place, there is a shortage of factual information. Some, some YouTubers, though, that's what they thrive on, that little part right there. Because the more fact, here's the thing, everybody. The more factual information you get, the sometimes it closes a lot of doors, right? So the wacko YouTubers, they love it when it's really ambiguous and just a couple statements here and there. Then they can run on for days and days coming up and concocting the most ludicrous stuff you've ever heard in your life so that they can keep covering a case, all right? So sometimes when... When we cover ones, once you've got all the information you need and you get to a certain point, there really isn't anything else. So the cool thing is, is I talked to the brother just before the show, actually, and 
and and that Greg, and he's going to come on the show, I believe five o'clock on Monday. So, it'll be interesting. Uh, hopefully, he can shed some more light on you know what was going on. I, I really want to know more about you know what was going on and who are these other people and you know. You know what kind of information is, have police given him if they if he can share it. So there you go. Uh, in particular, Hardy said he took issue with the rumored implication his sister had chosen to suddenly leave on her own. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense at all. See, isn't that weird? Like on this channel, we can almost eliminate that immediately, right? You just look at a few things, boom, it's out. Right? We didn't even need the you know, family members saying this or that. It just seems like that doesn't make any sense at all that she's just going to take off. In a few cases, Hardy said the rumors have presented people with information useful to the investigation from coming forward. That becomes very impactful when you're trying to investigate a case like this, Hardy said. Since his public statement on November 13th, Hardy said three people have come forward with new information. Oh, interesting. The months that followed Warner's disappearance have been very challenging. They're facing the unknown all the time. So now people are, okay, it's okay to talk about some of the things that I knew about. She has a very dynamic personality, a very strong personality, but she's extremely caring and defending of family and friends without any question. October 12th, uh, Lenawee County officers launched an extensive search. Yeah, that was, we already went over that part. All right, that was on November 20th, that last one. Then we've got one from... Top four at four, the search continues for a missing Lenawee County woman. What a, what a weird background photo to be talking about that case. And now friends and family of Deanne Warner a are trying to spread the word gurney. about her disappearance, hoping for answers. 13 ABC's Mackenzie Keyline has the latest. Well, throughout the county, you'll spot these bright yellow signs with the message justice for D. And as we get closer to the holiday, Deanne Warner's family says that they're continuing to pray for answers and grateful for the community's support. Now, the 52-year-old was last seen at her home on Munger Road in Franklin Township on April 25th. There has been no sign of her since. The Lenawee County Sheriff's Office, Michigan State Police, and FBI have... I mean, this is almost identical to Cheryl Coker, you guys. <laughs> I mean, there might be other ones out there like it, but it's so similar. You yeah, remember how the husband wasn't really part of it? He looks kind of, you know... I don't know how to explain it, but to me, it's very similar. She just disappears, and you got uh, this fight that happened at home. Um... And this guy probably planned it in a way that's very difficult to track. There's no way in hell she just walked away in and was abducted by an alien spacecraft. Well, Gray, how do you know? I mean, there are aliens out there. Well, that is true. There are alien space. Well, I mean, do I know for sure? Probably, I don't. But I do think that there are planets out there that have life that have life on them that are millions of years ahead of us on the evolutionary, you know, and the, the thing is, is we would only be dinosaurs right now with real, maybe big brains had a meteor not destroyed the entire planet and killed all the dinosaurs. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, so a million years ago, if they had developed a spacecraft and flew here, then perhaps they did do some abductions. Gee, Gray, that doesn't sound like very good odds. No, it really doesn't. Yeah, the, the Coker one is even just, it's ridiculous because there's this guy wearing all black at a mall right after he gets out of the vehicle. And guess where he walks? All the way back to the backyard of Coker's house. And the husband admits to being there when she went missing. <laughs> oh, boy. If it wasn't true, it would be... Warner are trying to spread the word about her disappearance, hoping for answers. 13 ABC's Mackenzie Keyline has the latest. Well, throughout the county, you'll spot these bright yellow signs with the message justice 
for D. And as we get closer to the holiday, D. and Warner's family says that they're continuing to pray for answers and grateful for the community's support. Now, the 52 year old was last seen at her home on Munger Road in Franklin Township on April 25th. There has been no sign of her since. The Lenawee County Sheriff's Office, Michigan State Police, and FBI have searched their family's property in October with drones and canines, but nothing has turned up. The sheriff is now asking residents to be vigilant while traveling for the holidays. If anybody sees anything, if they're traveling, if they're out and about, if they over... Uh, shut the hell up. Traveling? What are you talking about? Hear something, please uh, contact the sheriff's office. She's not out there traveling. And okay. um, and give us the He's information still talking so about that we that? can work on it. We've actively been working on this case and um, anything that... Any Man, that damn YouTube, they must have broke that super chat button again, didn't they? God, let me see it. Is it even... Let me click on it. Yeah, I don't even see it. Yep, must be gone. All right, here we go. We're on, uh, this is the last one. January 4th right here. Uh, brother pushing for answers in April 2021. Disappearance of 52-year-old D. Ann Warner from Lanawee County, Michigan. Greg Hardy was in college when his family got a big surprise. A little bundle of joy would be joining the family. That bundle of joy was baby sister named D. Ann. Uh, even though there was an 18-year 18 18-year 18 age difference between the two, Greg said he and Dee were very close. The whole family was. Greg told Dateline, oh, man, I better hurry up and interview them before Dateline calls over there and says, hey, 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 I don't talk to, yeah, don't talk to those guys. We want the exclusive story. She made friends easily and was in the life, and was the life of the party. Dee's family has been in, uh, Lanawi County, Michigan area for five generations and Greg told Dateline that they all live within a few miles of one, one another including D's hey look at it works Tawny Lee my god <laughs> I remember back in the day you wouldn't have those long hour long gaps it, it always freaks me out a little bit raised in a small farming community D had always been involved in agriculture but we eventually uh, driven uh, but was eventually driven to be involved in business. Greg told Dateline his sister was inspired by their aunt and grandmother who were both strong-minded strong businesswomen. So Dee started a trucking company and a farming business and, and uh, was, Greg said, very active running the company herself. Yeah, I mean, on her Facebook page... Uh, that, that's it's crazy. She's on there and she's telling everybody to, um, you know, like you scroll down on here and she's talking about. Uh, see, I thought that was a pretty funny one right there. There's well, no, I think it's actually on the uh, this website, the DDW Investments. That's her business. And then when you scroll down, there's like right there, right? Looking for truck drivers, good pay, that's July 14th. Benefits home. Hey, thanks for the effort there, uh, Tawny Lee. Looking for truck drivers, good pay, benefits, home on weekends, and that's it. And you know, so you go down here and then she, she's commenting. You know, she really was looking for truck drivers at that point. Now, there's a whole bunch of different times where you can tell, like, she's like, yeah, have him give me a call. You know, so she's excited about it. So, there you go. Hold on. Full speech? Let me see. I don't know. I thought I had the full speech. Let me see. How long is it? Eight minutes and 55 seconds. All right, I guess we could try the full, a different version of it. Throughout this investigation or this Hey, thanks, Carolina Girl, Your Gypsy, Billy Juliana, and Georgina Stoliker. Hey, it still worked. Oh, my God. I. I was broken. Sister. But at this time, I decided it's time that some things. I don't know what's going on. This is, oh, this is a mobile setting. Hold on, let me fix. 
See, everyone always sends me links with the M on it. <clears throat> you can't do that. This is what it looks like. All the duty that you folks have done to be here, my sister would definitely be impressed. Let's just play this one more time. Throughout this investigation or this missing person of seven months, I have not made any kind of a public statement. We've been working diligently behind the scenes to try to help find my sister. But at this time, I decided it's time. I guess Todd and Terry are employees. And so I want to make it clear that this statement is is a hmm. I'm making tonight is is one of me that I'm making personally. But why is Todd and Terry arguing with her? I have failed to speak out before because I didn't want to interfere with the investigation, but I feel it's important to clarify a few things. And after an extensive amount of time and money spent uh, in many calls of duty by many people, tips, people calling, helping, doing all kinds of things, it's been truly amazing how many people have participated in trying to find Dee. There have been people from all across the country, believe it or not, who have tried to participate. And for all of you, I say a big thank you. So the big question for me has been, and wanted to clarify is, what really happened on the fateful night of April 24th and early morning hours of April 25th? <clears throat> There's well question, unfortunately, was a, a, a toxic domestic fight going on between Dee and Dale Warner, Todd and Eric, Terry Nerick and Terry Nerick's wife. That's documented by text messages that I've had to view. This was not a one-off situation, folks. Unfortunately, the domestic problem had gone on probably too long, and it continued on throughout the day on Friday. The difference this time is that the intensity of this domestic dispute between Dee and Dale had elevated to a point which seemed of no return. Can you believe that? Uh, can you guys believe that the that sheriff was still saying in that interview just like uh, a couple weeks back? Now, if you see her out there somewhere, you know, keep your eye out and let, dude. You sound like a moron, okay? I don't mean to, I'm not trying to be rude here, but we already know that there's a whole different, there's something else going on here. She isn't walking around on the streets eight months later, okay? Man. In the late afternoon hours of April 24th, Dee had become overwrought and upset to the point where she had become- No, it's not on Dateline. What are you talking about? Ill, Facebook. Literally becoming physically ill throughout this this dispute that was taking place. He shared her emotion both by text and verbally with her family members and Amy Alexander. Amy Alexander understood the stress that Dee was under and offered to take Angelina to her home to spend the night to relieve some pressure from Dee. Amy picked Angelina up at 7.42 p.m. on Saturday night, the 24th. And shortly after that point, she and Dale, according to Dee's text, were going to talk things through. <clears throat> at that point, no one else was around. Dee's phone did not transmit any messages after sometime after 11 p.m. on Saturday night the 24th. Dee was discovered missing approximately 9 a.m. on April 25th by Raquel, who had come there for breakfast. Dale Warner claimed to know nothing about where Dee was when asked by family members looking for Dee on Sunday morning during the late morning hours and up through about noon. By evening on April 24th, when Dee could not be found, I approached Dale and asked him what was, what was going on. He proceeded to give me 
a story about how Dee had vanished without a car, without taking Angelina, without anything at all. And quite frankly, I considered it a concocted story. The story that Dee had just taken off has been extensively investigated. And I know it's been a story that's been out there a lot that she just decided to go somewhere and get away from everything. That whole process has all been- All right, I'm, I'm gonna put it into the chat. I just made a community post too, but I was just talking to, it must be a family friend on Facebook and they wanna, they're trying to have a petition sign. I think every one of you will wanna sign it to have the case transferred over to the state police. Okay, so there you go. I just put it in the uh, chat right there. It's also in the community section. So you can go do that after the show. I just signed it as we were. It's really easy. Just put your name, address, email. Right? Name, a first and last name and um, email address. What do you mean, what was the issue? And investigated thoroughly. And it is my opinion that that's nothing more than a made up story. In fact, there's never been one single micron of evidence that could corroborate the idea that Dee just took off. It is my opinion that Dee did not leave her home voluntarily. Now, without spending more time talking about all of that, I just want to be very clear on the, on the situation that took place. It has, by the way, really uh, hampered the investigation. Welcome, Vicky. So much rumor out there that, that Dee had, had left. But I do want to make a couple quick comments regarding the investigation. <clears throat> Authorities were led astray by two important traits on the day that Dee left. Dee went missing. One was that Dee had left Dale before. She had been in a dispute, had left. In one occasion, at least, she'd even come to our home. So I know that for a fact. Huh. The other part that would really hampered the investigation was Dale Warner's continued claim and concocted story about the fact that she had left and gone somewhere, somehow, some way. Uh, hard to put that together when she didn't take her car didn't take Angelina, didn't tell anyone anything. But you wanted to look like that by having her hard. phone and purse missing. Very valuable time was lost. But you remember early on, we, I said that there, because that there, you know, there was no credit card use, then there'd be no reason for, you know, it seems like it doesn't make sense that she brought her purse and her phone with her so that she could never use any of those items again. All right, so then it's obvious that it's not that, that it's either somebody took her off the property or she's on the property and the phone and the purse are, you know, for lack of a better thing to say, is buried with her somewhere, okay? But her phone was turned off before leaving that property or it's with her on the property and, you know, buried somewhere or it was turned off before leaving and her being taken somewhere and and probably buried or placed somewhere in the middle of nowhere where nobody can find her at this point. Well, the authorities pursued the unlikely story that Dee left without any car, without Angelina, without even a note to a family member saying, Hey, uh, Fierce Spartan, are you the one that's... At all, as I'm sure most of you know. Messaging me on Facebook? <laughs> her text messages that the authorities had access to showed she was in a horrible domestic situation at the time. Yeah. There was nothing indicating she was leaving, but rather she was planning on confronting Dale when he returned home around 8 p.m. that night. Out here. Her family, like the lady that's messaged me on Facebook, they've been family friends for 200 years. Their families have been friends. Can you believe that? Wow. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Furthermore, 
the authorities that were reluctant to even interview many family members early in the investigation. What what link? The whole they were only I've already got the link. I just put it on the there. unlikely idea that he took off without taking her car or Angelina. That was very disturbing to many of us who knew that some of these things just weren't normal and they needed to be discussed and needed to be investigated. As such, extremely valuable time was lost during that period. Yeah, that sheriff is just an absolute yahoo, man. Crazy ideas My God. At least they got the FBI in there. It has been extremely frustrating trying to work with the detectives and the sheriff's department on this case. The lack of meaningful communication. What do they have, like, the the blinking their eyes at you? The lack of accountability, in my mind, is unacceptable. And it creates a huge hardship on the family. That's all I have to say about this. I want to thank you again all for coming. Uh, We have... Yeah, hold on. Whoa. Sorry. I'm not, I, Discord's too hard for me to get to. Anyways, you guys go sign that uh, petition really quick. Yeah, go, uh, go sign that and then come back. Yeah, we don't. You can't post in here, Fierce Spartan. So you're not a channel, not a moderator. So it didn't. It didn't show up. Okay. So here it is, right here. I was trying to help out with the logo on there. Um, I think they. I thought they updated it. Because I messaged one of them earlier, but here's the right there in the. I just put that in there. That's the Facebook group right there, and then I'm going to go out to um, I'll also make a community post for that. All right, hold on a second. There you go. So we got the change.org and the Facebook group in there. And then maybe um, Beholder can post it in the uh, Discord area too. But somebody already sent it to me on Facebook. Sweet. Awesome. Well, that's just crazy. Yeah. How sad. They've had this information since the beginning. Obviously. And they waited all those months to, you know, like, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I mean, they should have been tracking the husband for the eight months. Wondering, you know, seeing where the hell he was going. Because he could have moved her by now, you know? Okay. So that is going to be uh, that's going to be it for tonight on that case. Um, but what we're going to have is uh, Greg is going to come on the show on Monday at like five o'clock live, so we can go over it and uh, maybe get go through some of those details. You guys can ask questions and so forth. That'd be cool. All right. But right now we're going to switch over and do the. Um, Malachia Logan case that didn't make it to the end of the show yesterday and tonight I did Deanne Deanne Warner first so we're going to do that one but I'm going to first need to have my uh, my apple okay so here we go (laughs) and there it is all right ooh wait you guys don't get that part there we go there's the apple And I think I'm going to get some apple sauce this time.
Yeah, they're both on there. Mm. Well, it's in the community. It's a community post. Yeah, there's definitely two posts right there. I can see them. They're both public. But anyways, uh, this is where you can also help out the channel too, because um, we've got the you do the stem, and then we've got the bites of the apple, and then you can uh, check out Blue and Chloe for a little bit. I'm gonna eat my. Uh, I'm gonna have to eat my uh, apple sauce. Yeah, no problem, fierce Spartan. Uh, who's who's the brother-in-law in here that you said? Are you guys going to help me eat through this apple or what? Are we just going to stare at it? You just put your name, your first and last name, and your email address. How It's not hard. It's... <laughs> Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. We'll get you the stem and the first bite. How about that? <laughs> yeah, I am eating applesauce tonight, so it doesn't really quite sound like that. Anthony B. Here we go. Michelle Sakura Griggs and Anthony B. And they're both sitting there, I saw. Uh, okay. Oh, Dustin L is in here. So who is Oh there he is. There he is, Dustin L. Okay. Wait, so we got one, two. And then Eugenie. Oh my god, quietly frozen. We're going to get right through that whole apple right now. Missed being here. Wow. Oh, they had COVID? Holy shit. Oh, wow. Your mom passed away. Oh, man. I'm sorry about that. That's brutal. Passed away, jeez. Yeah, sorry to hear that. It's one of my favorite names on YouTube. Quietly Frozen. Ah, that's, that's terrible. And she died from COVID, too? I mean, that's what happened? Man. And there we go. <laughs> They're not looking too enthusiastic right there. Well, I hope all of you guys go out and sign that. That's, I think, I've never seen anything more ludicrous in my life. To have that kind of information and have them still saying... Well, if you see her walking around out there, that shouldn't you know just shut up at that point. Yes, that's right. D after the argument said, "I've had enough," and became a homeless person. She literally just walked away with her person phone, and then at some point tossed it into a river somewhere. And now is living out on the streets under in a tent. That's what that's what it sounds like the sheriff thinks. Give me a break. My god. Idiots. Good 
Got some uh, chiclets there, uh, quietly frozen. Oh, you must not have done the right one. Maybe your IP address didn't work. Well, do it again, Zozo. It's really simple. Look, let me let me show it to you on the screen, everybody. Uh, Oh yeah, well, well, how come it doesn't ask for my name anymore? Huh, that's weird. Here, I'm gonna... How do you... I wanna pay, give more. Alright, so I'm gonna do, uh... I'm sending in 25 bucks to that. All right, there we go. I don't know. I did. It, it looks. I think after you sign it, it looks different the next time. So I don't know how to help you. All right, there we go, there we go. Awesome. Yeah, like they're, uh, hold on. I gotta send her a picture really quick. Oops. I'm, I'm actually talking to one of the uh, the friends of the family. I got to send them because I had fixed earlier in the day one of the images. Oh, and I just talked to one of the uh, one of the. Uh, daughters actually said she appreciates everything that we're pointing out so that's good but uh, I'm looking forward to having Greg come on so he can really give us get the details out there and we'll just we just make a really big push to get all the you know more people to sign that so if you guys can go out and share that yeah they're really nice people I you know I you know you know, that's what you get when the small town people are a lot of times just so incredibly nice, you know. <coughs> what was confusing? The, the petition? When I opened it up, it just said put your first and last name in and your email address and that was it and it said thank you then the second time I went back it wanted to I don't know it had more stuff going on I don't know did I give the right one or Aren't, aren't you guys angry for the family? <laughs> How can you have that kind of information and then be doing this whole 
Well, we think she left on her own. Angle. No, that's not really, it's not how it worked at all. The husband doesn't even have a good explanation for anything. What is he saying? Well, last time I saw her, walk, she walked out the front door with her, her purse and uh, cell phone. Well, where'd she go after that? I don't know. I, I was watching television. Yeah. So, sorry if I sent out the link incorrectly, but it looked like I sent it out right. I don't know. <laughs> God, it just makes me pissed off. Man, I'm really looking forward to having Greg on here to go over this. Uh, he, he actually says that, Dustin? <laughs> wow. So, uh, what what is your relationship, Dustin? Oh, okay. Good, Sozo. I don't know what if I sent it to you wrong, you guys wrong or not, but some of you could do it. I know it's crazy, right, Mag? I mean. D is in Yeah, all that other crap. Yeah, I don't know what that stuff is. It's gonna be a long night because I'm gonna get through the other case too. It's just a cold case, but I don't want to keep putting it off. Oh, your mother-in-law? So you're... Oh, are you the, are you married to her daughter? Um, Amber? Is that who you're married to? Mexico or Jamaica. God, give me a break. And, and uh, what's she living off of over there? Oh, another, another daughter. Okay. So how many, what are the ages of her children? There's one that's like seven or eight, right? The, the youngest one, the one that was, um, that one of her friends picked up. I think it was Amy. Yeah, the one that Amy picked up, that one, that daughter's only like seven or eight, right? I know, I know that show, Gunny. He just told me that up there. I, I even said it on the show. Uh, no, I was um, eating applesauce. <laughs> DTJO Tracy. That's crazy. 34, 32, 30, 27, and 9. Are they all from the same dad? Or was she married to somebody else prior and this is a, a newer husband? Maybe you can answer that question. Because that's a little bit, that's a huge gap right there. 34, 32, 30, so it was like 27, 30, 32, 34. Yeah, we see that right up there. Dustin just typed it in. Is the husband the same husband the whole time of all five children? Okay, that's what I was thinking. How long has she been with uh, Dale, Dustin? So she was pretty young having the first four kids. You know, 18 up to... I think. Yeah, that's right. She's only 52, right? 
So uh, she was like 18 to 25 uh, having the first uh, four kids. Oh, wow. So they were married 20 something years. Was there a re I mean, did he really want to have a kid with her? Or, I mean, how did that come about? Now, that don't, that don't, don't worry about that question. Forget that one. I'm just trying to figure out, so it's kind of, it's unusual, I gotta say, but. Oh, really? So Dale has four kids from a previous marriage, too. Wow. What's not a good sign, Patty? Yeah, I, I asked him those questions. He's answering them. Older ones are from a previous marriage, and they've been married for 20 years. Um, I mean, with the new, with Dale and her have been married for 20 years ish, and then they just had a child, uh, you know, nine years ago. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, that's just absolutely mind-boggling what's going on here. I, I, I had a feeling it was going to turn into that. I just wasn't sure what kind of detail. And definitely Greg gave us a lot of... Uh, I feel weird saying Greg since you guys call me that all the time. But, um, you know, I thought it was going to go in that direction. It was so useful having those that interview from... Or not the interview, the speech that Greg gave and a couple other parts that he had information in. And it was like, man, that's kind of what you pictured. I mean, you know what I mean? Like if I, if you asked me and told me she went missing, because I, get, I know this for a fact, that earlier in the day when I was just looking at it, I thought, I wonder if she got in a fight with her husband at the home that night. That, that is an actual thought that popped into my head. And why it popped into my head is because of the vast number of cases that we've covered, that's usually a reason that somebody just disappears from a home for no reason at all. Yeah, there's no way, Dustin. I don't think anybody here at all even remotely considers the possibility that she just left, okay? There isn't anybody in here that would think that. And I, I, I would say there is zero chance, given the information that we now have, that she left on her own and is just chilling out. There's no way she wouldn't have contacted one of her kids to say, hey, I'm okay, I'm just, I was so scared, I'm hiding. There's no chance in hell. There is no way in hell she is out and about walking around. Right, exactly, Beholder. There's just no chance. Yeah, right. She would have called somebody or... Yeah. Right. Ah, unreal, unreal. Ah, God, just, <laughs> I got that same feeling in the Cheryl Coker case, you know, just, ah, how in the hell is that guy still walking around? It's obvious, you know. They found her remains later, but still haven't arrested him, even though he's been the only suspect they've had in the case since the beginning. Okay, so she was 17 years old when she was married the first time. 18 when she had her oldest kid, that's what I was thinking. 
yeah so uh maybe maybe uh dustin maybe you'd want to come on the show after greg comes on uh on a different night like a tuesday or something would that be uh something you'd be interested in or just curious I don't know if you're still out there or not. But. Family has connections to the... I don't know. They just seem like they're absolutely unconcerned law enforcement. Well, we, we continue to look. You know, not every day. Uh, three. What do you mean you're not looking every day when you have that kind of information? You should have somebody trailing Dale on a daily basis. And you should have had one trailing him for a long time. Oh, cool. All right. That sounds good, uh, Dustin. So, uh, can you? How about? Can you send me an email to? Uh, let me give you my. Or you can get a hold of me on Facebook, but you could also send me an email to this uh, address right there. I just put it in the chat there. It's basically phonetically saying my name, grayhughes2 at gmail.com. And don't anybody say, oh, that's what you were doing. All right. So I'm going to move on to this other case right now. We'll get back on to this on Monday and um, get as much information as we can. And then we'll just keep, you know, putting it out there see what we can well maybe we'll keep it going and on tuesday maybe we can have dustin come in and talk about it again and maybe we can have even different people coming on and that is unless dateline shows up and says they don't want you to talk to them anymore because they did that in the Lori and chad daybell case i was communicating with a family and they were talking every day, but then Dateline wanted exclusive rights to a story. And I'm just trying to get the story out there to get the information out there. I don't have any larger agenda for a TV show or anything. We just were like a radio show trying to get the story out. So that's one of the things about... Uh, I hate that aspect of it. It's like they just try to come in no matter what case it is. And they, they don't let you communicate anymore. So hopefully they can come on before Dateline jumps in. And <laughs> oh man, you should have. You guys should have seen that. You guys remember that, right? It was crazy. Is anybody still there? You guys aren't chatting that much. Yeah, they absolutely. You know, it was incredible. As I was talking to. Um, No, I don't even remember now. Was, uh, what was the name? Well, the, it was the older, the grandparents, right? And uh, my brain just totally fogged out right there. But uh, they actually used his phone and called me up and said, I thought it was him. I was like, oh, and I was like excited to talk to him. And then they said, this is Dateline. Uh, they don't want you to talk to him anymore. <laughs> yeah, L Larry and Kay Woodcock. There you go. <clears throat> Just needed that little hint there, and I would remember. I was punched by a patient, and it crunched my jaw joint. Yeah. Jeez. All right, you guys ready?
Hold on, I gotta type this in. Why was she? Huh. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting that those other employees were mentioned too, because I was wondering, well, they must know what happened also, right? So wouldn't it be weird if uh, they all together hatched a plan and covered everything up? That it wasn't just Dale. Maybe it was the, the employees that were part of the argument. That crossed my mind. All right, <laughs> man, it just seems like it just keeps on. There's more stuff going on. It's crazy. This is almost like an old school type of night right here, right? Like this been off. Okay, so he's one of the employees too, right? Hmm. Well, what? Hey, uh, Dustin, what would be a reason that they were arguing? What do they have to do with Dale and D? Like, what? What? You know, what? Why are they even part of that whole thing? What was going on there? Well, that's what I was saying, Ann. More. That's what I was saying. Strange taking a child to someone else for for an argument. Yeah, that means it was bigger than it should have been. I mean, it was a must have been a massive argument, and so much so that she didn't want her own child to even be around. No, I hope you start feeling better, Amber. I don't like having freaks that aren't feeling good. Yeah. Maybe she had a feeling something bad may well happen. Maybe. It'd be interesting to talk to Amy to see why, what, like, what was the gist of how it was worded in the, the text message or whatever, however they communicated, of why she wanted her daughter picked up. Hmm. But Terry's wife was in an argument, and it all got out of hand. Todd got involved. And Dale would not defend D in that argument. Todd and Terry are brothers. Ah. Wait. Wait, Todd. Terry. Oh, so there was a whole bunch of people there. Terry, uh, Nirmik's wife, was in an argument with D. And it all got out of hand. Todd got involved and Dale would not defend D in that argument. Todd and Terry. Uh, are brothers and both employees. So there was five people there. Thanks, Cindy Leon. You can see Dee's last Facebook post on how she felt about Dale not defending her. I that you know what? Oh man, that's great. So listen, Dustin, right when the show started, I showed that post and I said, I wonder if that's referring to somebody. And that's kind of, you know, it's what it does is it sort of really makes does make you realize that when you cover all these cases that your instincts are really pretty clear and quick. 
in these and they, they work. Uh, that's the first thing that I showed. Also, do you know what that other Facebook post is? So when the show first started, I said, um, I showed this post right here and I said, a man doesn't protect his woman because she is weak. He protects her because she is important. And I was wondering if that was a message to the husband, but it could also be that she posts all kinds of messages. She posts all the time. And then I want to know what this one is right here. What is this one? That's a weird sit deal there. Almost like she tried to send something, but it didn't work out. Or I mean, she does post a lot of stuff. You know, I thought this was hilarious, by the way. Just had my first shot. Going to get my second one as soon as the waitress comes back. <laughs> that was that. Come on. I don't care who you are. That, that one's funny. Yeah, the encrypted post. It's crazy, right? That one's actually funny too, right? Uh, Biden being slingshotted out from... Uh, come on. Even you... Come on. Even you guys that love Biden... I mean, so she posted all the time. I and mean, look at all these. These are, you know, April 17th. She went over and over all the time, posting, 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 posting. And then she posts this one. And look at the date of it is. That means she posted that probably during the day. I bet this was before the really big argument at the very end of the night. Well, good for her, Dustin. I like her more. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, and that was at... See, this is 1.06 in the morning on the 24th. So that would be my time, I think. So that must have been... No, right now it's 4 in the... Yeah, so that would have been 4 in the morning on... So this is before the fights that day. Isn't that wild? Don't get upset, Patty. Yeah, wouldn't don't wouldn't you feel that way if your husband wasn't defending you with in a fight against other people? That was an all weekend deal. I see. So she was already putting this out there. And this one, this is weird here, though. You wonder if that one was late at night. Well, what's the date on that? Hold on, let me see. Wait, oh, I had it there. Crap. Now, that one's at 6.41 a.m. on the 24th, which would have been 9.41 on the, uh, where it was posted. I think that's what that means. The date there is what time was it here? So it's either 9.41 or 6.41 East Coast time in the morning. So that was just something else being put up there. It would have been, it'd be really interesting to see your text messages to other people uh, later in that day. And that's probably Dale right there. Looks a little bit like Cheryl Coker's uh, husband. Yep. He never did. God, what an idiot. Jeez. Yep. Okay. Well, I wouldn't mind having a show where a, a whole bunch of you came on at the same time, you know? Dustin, Greg, uh, I don't know who Fierce Spartan is. Or am I communicating with you on Facebook, Fierce Spartan? Are you the same person? <laughs> I mean, I don't know at this point, but... Because you're not called that in real life, so...
Hmm. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. I see him every day. We live next to him. Oh. Yikes. So what does he do on a daily basis? Just walk around? Oh, he's in Mexico. How long has he been in Mexico? Let me guess. He's looking for her, right? He, he's over there looking for D. He's going to come back and say, he's what he's going to do. Uh, two weeks before he comes home, he's going to, uh, you know, not bat bathe again or anything. And he's going to come back home. He's going to be crawling home and saying, oh, I looked everywhere. And I just couldn't find her. Total bullshit. Yeah, we've got shelters here, yeah. Hmm. You know what I might do is uh, I'll do the early show tomorrow on just have that other case be its own case by itself and just keep this one the way it is because we're already at two hours and 46 minutes. But it'll be my third show in a row. Ooh, I'm going to have to get change the thumbnail again. Did he take his daughter with him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, where's the daughter while he's in Mexico? Oh, but now he just goes back for, what, vacation? He's pro What he's probably doing over there is setting up a place to live. And eventually, uh, when the heat's really coming down, he's going to get the hell out of here. That's what I think. She's with him. Wow. Unbelievable. Uh, it's a little bit like uh, Melissa Pesky case too, right? You got the kids with the like the monster. Yeah. Well, Mexico won't extradite. Uh, that's one of the reasons people go to Mexico. Is because they won't extradite you unless you take the death penalty off the table. And uh, so they'll just kind of hold out, and then the FBI has to get involved and cut a deal. What do you mean, who are we talking about, Karen? Go back to the, just re hit the rewind button and start over, okay? Yeah, what a nightmare. I mean, I put rewind on exactly for you. <laughs> uh. Oh, you're a friend of D and the one you're talking to. Oh, okay. Hmm, that's just crazy. I'll not let D's older kids see the little girl. Yeah, because they would talk to it. Man. What's the other case that was in California? with the father who killed uh, Malete, Maya Malete. See, it's similar in that one. He kept his kids from talking to any other family members until he was just arrested. And now the kids are out and I'm sure they, you know, the whole story's out. And, you know, that's a good comparison, actually, that case. Because he, you know, he actually killed his wife and um, and then drove her somewhere and then came back and pretended, you know, he obviously turned off his phone and all that kind of stuff. And they still haven't found her, but he's been arrested.
Yeah, well, of course, he doesn't want... No, that's not what it is, generally. That's not what's going on there. He doesn't want them telling the daughter anything that he doesn't approve. Yeah, well, of him, right, yeah. Yeah, when, when he's not going to let the kids see anybody that he knows or anything like that at all. I bet you those kids have not seen a soul unless he was right next to him for eight months. I, I'd like to know if anybody has had any alone time at all with the nine-year-old since this happened. <laughs> hey, uh, Hold on a second. <laughs> this is funny. So, um, the person I'm talking to on Facebook is... Hold on. Where is... There she is. There it was. Uh, Fierce Spartan, you, you knew who I was talking to on Facebook, but she doesn't know who you are. But she probably does, because how would she know that I'm you? I am talking to her on Facebook? So, you need to tell uh, tell her it's me, it's me. <laughs> hey, it's Jamie McLaughlin. Saddest thing is almost every one of these stories we are told about are so similar in one way or not. Yeah, isn't that wild? I mean, we've covered, gosh, uh, at least. 50 cases that are have some element that's similar. How's everything going with you, Jamie? Well, the little girl... Yeah, it's weird, too, because the girl wouldn't have been there during the the key moment, right? Because she was gone already. So what the only thing the girl could have witnessed would have been, you know, I saw Daddy do this and that, you know, but that would have been prior. Okay. I don't know. Do you, do you want me to, Zozo? I just said a second ago that I might move. have to move that one for an early show tomorrow because it's kind of long. I don't know if you missed that part or not. Um, what what made you bring that up, though? Do you want me to... Is that something you want me to cover really quick? or? Well, thanks, Jamie. Hope I, uh, you know, it'll be, be cool to have a good year, that's for sure. She may have heard or seen something. Up. Yeah, that's true. Like when she came home the next day, that's 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 a good point there. Yeah, the problem, the thing is I was going to switch topics, but there's a lot of information being, you know, we're getting from uh, Dustin in there. Now she goes to school. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's got a lot of, uh, the other story has a ton, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to do an earlier show tomorrow. And uh, then I'm not really sure what the afternoon, the, the regular show, maybe it'll be a call-in show. And heck, maybe we can, people can call in about this one. You know, maybe Dustin and other people. And then I'll have Greg come on and do the sort of like the formal show 
on um, Monday, but maybe other people will feel free to call in um, tomorrow night, perhaps. I was, maybe I'll just do like a, a true crime call in or something. High chemicals in it, and there are also silo tanks with liquid chemicals in it on that property. Most of those chemicals will dissolve. Really? Hmm. Yikes. Yeah, so there, I mean, you got, there's a silo there, there, and a whole bunch of small ones over here. I think where they were digging, I don't know if you were watching earlier, but I think that was right next to this. Looks like almost a silo on its side. And they were kind of just digging right in that area there. And um, you guys know anything, you know anything about the ping information, Dustin? Because I'm thinking that the uh, the phone must have pinged in specific locations on that property, uh, given the fact that there's a cell tower right there, and then there's another cell tower right here, and that's inside of a three mile radius, and then this one's probably at you know four and a half right to there. And then there's other cell towers not too far away either. So they should have been able to triangulate that pretty well. Yeah, well, she lives right here, Zozo. You must have missed that too. But this is like the house right here. Yeah. And then on that property, uh, in, you know, not the most beautiful backyard, I, I'll have to admit there. Uh, although it gets pretty back in, probably back in this area. But uh, yeah, it's a big uh, trucking, agricultural trucking, commodities situation. Do they use this for storing some of the uh, commodities that they have to go actually get? Yeah, so the smaller tanks might be... Uh, I mean, there, it looks like there's some holes in the top of them. I mean, I wouldn't want this to be a little bit like the Chris Watts case. That'd be pretty crazy. Did anybody check those out? Okay, so they, they know, that's why they've been, they know where her phone was on the property. I guarantee it. You live right here? <laughs> Underneath the tower itself? I mean, or right there. You live right around in that area? I mean, you're like directly under the cell tower. He said there, there's some kind of like dissolving stuff in these. Well, the backyard might look good right back here, you know, like if you can get over to this area kind of you know those kind of woods look cool but uh, you know like it's a really it looks like a beautiful home here and then this is pretty cool okay so the one I was uh, looking at like maybe over here kind of that one or I guess it doesn't really matter but there's another one right over here there's a house right there so you're, you're just right there all the time. Let me ask you this. Are there cameras on that property, Dustin? There should be. Hey, what happened to our buddy...
<laughs> Alright, Jamie. Yeah, well, good to make you laugh, you know. I do try to make people laugh. Even in the crappy times, just not at the case. Hmm, mostly on the east side. Where's uh, Billy Juliana? This stuff would all be really interesting. Oh, there she is right there. That's what I was wondering about. I was wondering where Ju our buddy Billy Juliana went. All the things, yeah. Hmm. And I'm sure those... You know what? I wouldn't be shocked at all if law enforcement didn't even check those damn cameras. For, they, they probably like months later said yeah let's look at those well keep in mind sir we've already written over those cameras the, the uh, footage every two weeks oh okay yeah because they thought she just took off I wonder if they even looked at those it'd be kind of interesting to see any movement at all on any one of those cameras after say 11 o'clock on the 24th in the evening okay when was the camera footage taken from the cameras though was it done in the first two weeks because that doesn't sound very likely given their sort of lack of interest and i don't know if they only last two weeks by the way these newer cameras like you can go back a long time especially like on ring cameras Yeah, so apparently uh, Dale, Todd, and Terry, they've all refused polygraph tests. Oh, weird. So the person I'm talking to on Facebook said that, um, she said, because I mentioned Chris Watts, and she said, uh, funny you mentioned Chris Watts from the beginning and in my interview with the detective I pointed out that Dale said the same thing Chris said we got into a fight she slept on the couch and I went to bed she was sleeping when I went to work <laughs> oh god and then she disappeared ah, interesting maybe, maybe he got that from the the Chris Watts case. He didn't realize how it didn't work for him either. Uh, so there, she's saying that they believe everything that Dale says. You know, it's a good old boy, small town network. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. That's why they're still, if you see her out there, great. Yeah, she took one, huh? How'd she do? Okay, so they did get the footage in the good at the right amount of time. Good. But wouldn't they have thought through that though? I mean, if you were there and you committed something, a crime, you're going to you're going to know where your own cameras are, and you're going to get avoid that. She passed. Well, I wonder what the questions were. Well, it could have been that a lot of people left, right? Like, we don't know if the other people, Terry and, um, what's the other name? Terry and Todd had anything to do with her not being alive. We don't know that. They could have helped cover it up, but maybe the fight got really bad later. And he, you know, he just, like, snapped or something and killed her, you know, maybe killed her. I don't know. I, I hate saying that with family members around, but I just got to be, say the way I say it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, well, Catherine's the one I'm talking to on uh, Facebook. Maybe that's why he isn't speaking to the media. <laughs> yeah, maybe. That's where Chris Watts went wrong, yeah. Crazy. Wow, this is getting nuts here. I think she was, uh, one of her friends was supposed to come over for breakfast in the morning. That was in one of the interview. the, what Greg said. Supposed to, they were supposed to have breakfast in the morning and she didn't show up or wasn't there. And then, then that's when the ball got rolling on her being missing. Dodd showed up to the property to run a semi-load at 2.30 to 3 a.m. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow, that's crazy. Well, do they know where that semi went and where it might have stopped? I mean, that's crazy right there. Oh, man, that's, that's, that's bad news. What, what was what was supposedly in that load? I mean, what are the odds of that? Does Todd normally do two thirty in the at in three a.m. takeoff time loads on a Saturday? Or maybe that's Friday. Uh, maybe that's I think that's Saturday. Yeah. So the breakfast was myself and Raquel who showed up. We noticed her missing. And is that and then how long until she was reported missing? Oh, so you and your wife, one of her daughters, was supposed to go over for breakfast, I see. Hmm. And then so how did that play out? Can you I almost feel like he should be calling in or something right now. It's like we just keep waiting for the, the text exchange back. The numbers on the screen aren't good, by the way. Well, I don't know, but it, it was a semi-truck. It could go anywhere. Ah, jeez. Wouldn't her passport show if she has left the U.S.? Well, she didn't leave the U.S., so why even wonder about it? Not not alive, anyways. I can tell you that. Yep. The party call for what? I wouldn't want anybody but. Um, Dustin to call in <laughs> other than another family member like I don't do uh, panels hmm so then uh, how long after that until you yeah but he but that's not what he was doing he has a semi truck It was a load. Okay. What, you're over there, uh, like, marking down everybody's name, T.T. Joe Tracy?
Let's see. So I can do a, I could put a zoom link in here. And only, I only want Dustin or one of the other, you know, three people. You know, it could be, uh, you know, Catherine or, and you don't even have to call in if you don't want it. Okay. But I'm just going to put it in the, it's a zoom link, but you don't have to have your video on or anything like that. Cause I don't have it set up for that right now. So I'm going to put it in here and then I'm going to pin it. Okay. So it's at the top of the screen there. That's the zoom link. If any one of you want to come in, we can talk about the case here. Let me, uh, all right. So if you're out there, Dustin, and you want to just go through this again, and then I'll have Greg come on on Monday, and then maybe tomorrow we can, I don't know, we'll, maybe I'll call him up and see if he wants to come on earlier. Well, he, I think he lives right around there. He works there. He was already there arguing earlier in the day. Right. She, they explained that. Could be seen from the house and that Dustin and her daughter could see her car. Hmm. I don't even remember reading that at this point. Okay, uh, Catherine said she'll only come on if Dustin comes on. <laughs> okay, all right. I mean, you guys don't have to use your video, but if you want to, I could try to figure out a way to get on. Uh, yeah, so I've already got, I've only got something set up for, how does this one work? If, Yeah, no. I, don't, I have it set up for identifinders. For oh, there we go. Let's see. I don't know who that is. Who who is this person here? Hello. Something happened. Hey, it was somebody named Connie. I don't know what, uh, that didn't seem like one of the names that we were working with. I don't know, Zozo. How do you know, Zozo? I mean, come on. That's maybe how in Australia and all that stuff, but how do you know? Uh, yeah, we don't really know what he's doing. I don't think he, yeah, I don't think he's picking up anything. I think the load at 2.30 was a load to, um, I thought you said he, I thought you, I read your statement wrongly. No way, I thought you said that he could be picking up fertilizer, but you said no way he's picking up. Yeah, um, yeah, it doesn't make, to me, it seems really strange that he's in an argument earlier in the evening or during the day. Now at 2.30 in the morning, right after she disappears, there's this truck leaving. You know, I wonder what else is on that truck.
Well, do you think you can uh, get, are you going to be able to uh, call in Dustin or Fierce Spartan? That link at the very top up there, the Zoom link, is you guys can call in. And if, if you're not, I'll just turn it off right now so the crazy people don't come in. Yeah, well, it seems like it would be on the paperwork what the load was, right? I mean, obviously, you know, somebody's there and they're loading up the... He doesn't load the semi, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Does it seem natural that he would have left at 2.30 in the morning? Oh, you're at work? Okay. All right. So I'm going to shut it off. Thank you, TTJO Tracy. Man, this is nuts, right? The truck needs to be tracked down. Well, that's eight months ago, Angela. Yeah, see, law enforcement just didn't do the stuff that they should have been doing because they assumed it was something it wasn't, probably because they believed what Dale was telling them, which is absolutely ludicrous. When Once law enforcement heard that there was a really bad argument, so bad that she had to actually call a friend to take one of her, her youngest child um, away so that the fight could continue. And then you're going to listen to what he says when he says, oh, no, she just took off to Mexico and Jamaica. And you're just going to believe that crap? Oh, come on. Man, you should, you should be immediately become unsheriffed at that point. You are an idiot at that point. Wow. Hey, uh, Fierce Spartan, do you know what the load was? How about you? Do you know what the uh, load might have been at 2.30 in the morning? I mean, wouldn't you see that on the paperwork around the office? I know I saw that. That was for the job that was an opening, Zozo. I already looked that up earlier. The opening that she was advertising for said weekends off. Yeah. I already mentioned that earlier. Aluminum fines. Now, what what is what does that entail? Aluminum fines. I don't know what that means. <laughs> like fine tailing, like little tiny pieces of aluminum. And was that like a commodity that was purchased and then eventually sold or something? Or? Oh. Catherine just said she tried to call in, but she said she was only going to call in. Oh, well. All right, I'll do it again. Hold on a second.
What are you bark? What are you growling up, Blue? Recording in progress. All right, hold on. All right, I'm I'm, make, I'm pinning another show link right here, okay? Okay, I guess I'm replacing. I don't even know what I removed up there. All right, so that should work up there now, the new pinned link. So there you go. Give it a whirl, Catherine. <laughs> All right. It should work. You don't even have to have your face on there because I, I'm not going to be able to show it anyways, but... Yeah, when when I remember the the one job post said weekends off, and then I was thinking, well, shit, that would have been a Saturday, but yeah, I don't know. Who knows how they, you know? And does everybody have the weekend off? All right, here we go. Here we go. It's Catherine. Are you there? I can't hear you if you're talking. Oh, wait, your audio, something's connecting now. All right, so let me, now I'm, you have to hit star six, what is the number again? Star six, nine or something? Star six, ah, hell, I don't even remember now. But I have, you have to unmute yourself. And if that doesn't work, just hang up and call back in again. Star six, you have to hit to unmute yourself. And plus you can unmute yourself just with the button. You have to unlock the meeting. Oh, I see. Well, no, it is unlocked. What are you talking about? Oh. Hmm? Not sure what's going on here. Here, why don't you just uh, try coming back? There you go. Okay, that's another person. All right. This is the the name in chat. Can't remember what the name of. Hello. Hello. This is uh, Steph. Or yes, Lots this is Stephanie. <laughs> All right. Well, Catherine's there, but her line is it's saying it's. I don't know. She's got her hand up in the air. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> I don't know. She's trying to come on, but it's not working. I was having a hard time, too, but I finally got through. Okay. Um, well, hey, uh, Catherine, why don't you just hang up and then call, come back in, okay? Try that. All right, there you go. All right. Um, so where, where were we at? So what are... You know what the load was that was picked up at two in the morning? Yeah, it was aluminum fines. It's pieces of metal. Pieces of metal. Yeah. All shavings. shavings, metal shavings. That's what I was thinking. Like little, like fine tailings. You know, like something you might say. That's why it looks right. fine. Like little small parts. Okay. Can you can hear us now. Um, well, Catherine's trying to connect. All right. All right. So, I think I'm in. Oh, there you go. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> so we got Catherine and Stefan here. Or Stefan. Yeah, you go by Stephanie or? Steph is fine. Okay. All right. So, shoot. Uh, <laughs> so were you around on the day that this argument happened? I was not, no. Um, I worked there, though. So that whole 
few months I was there through the whole thing. Hmm. So when you say when you, you were there, the whole thing, like there, were they arguing for months before? Or is this, are you saying even after that? Like, No, I'm just saying I was there um, after it happened, yeah. I wasn't there the day that um, that she was in an argument. The Friday before there, it started. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there, um, do you remember, what did she tell you about their relationship over the months prior? Could you tell there were problems or... Or were there any? With Dale or the employees? Well, I, probably with Dale. Well, maybe both, really. I mean, you see, there's been problems with Dale for a, a, a long time. Mm -hmm. And then, what do you think the problem was with the employees and Dale with her all at the same time? What, like, what was going on there? that one i can't speak to that one i i have no idea because i didn't work there i i was i'm on a personal side of that stephanie worked there oh, okay um so it basically started um with some issues with terry and his wife um d had helped them out and there was some issues there with um her trying to uh, it was basically separate from Dale and Dee's argument later that night but it was about per, uh, business issues between Dale and or I'm sorry between Terry and Terry's wife was it was there money Todd. associated with it like what's so, that was it was there money like somebody owed somebody money Correct. Yeah. Was it a lot of money? No. No? But somebody owed somebody uh, money. Probably, they probably owed her money, right? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. So they were angry, and then Dale wasn't defending, and then they probably gotten just a way more heated argument that has probably been building up for a long time, right? Correct. Yeah. Is there stuff that you, you can't say or something? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like yeah, I'm... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. just don't know how much I'm <laughs> yeah. supposed to say, I guess, because I'm not... I'm, I was Dee's best friend, um, and I just... I don't know. I feel more comfortable if the family was on here, but um, I do know a lot. They, they had an argument but i don't feel like that had anything to do with her disappearing the art the argument between terry and todd and the wife i strongly believe that it had something to do with the dale and d argument mm -hmm. um as far as dale not standing behind her through the whole issue that she had with the employees that's sort of what that's that's kind of how I was picturing it too. But I was thinking that, but maybe one of the other employees they didn't like her either, so may have helped cover something up. What right. You, yeah. I, I can't say for sure, but yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a it's a speculation. Perhaps. Right. Uh, but you think maybe he like it, he just snapped or something in an argument? I do. I do. I think he lost his temper. Um, because he was a person who was a hothead. Um, I've seen it multiple times at the workplace. Hmm. I mean, he can go from zero to 60 and real, real quick in anger. Yeah. Now, do you guys have... It sounded like you had an ad on the site that she put up there for somebody to drive trucks but they're home for the weekend is that how it is for all the employees or just that particular shift that was open um that was kind of like a um sh drivers right now are far and few between just like everything else nurses you know everything there's a shortage everywhere we're with employees so it was kind of like a what like a, like a sales Thing, like a sales in. pitch yeah. correct yeah to get drivers to come in and if, but if they wanted to do something 
on a Saturday or Sunday, they could do it. Or you might even ask them, can yep. you do that? And they'd probably do it because it's pay, you know, pretty good pay, yes. I'm sure. You know? Yeah, there was loads all the time on Saturday and Sundays. Um, the reason why they left so early was to get, obviously, to a place that's far away in a timely manner. Okay. So you think that they were just doing what they normally would do i mean because that, that yes. was a load that was already planned probably right correct okay. yes yeah all right so that kind of that's a good yeah somewhat of an alibi although there's two hours prior to that three even where is when she went missing like at 11 o'clock right right and i feel like the person who took that load that early in the morning had to have seen something but isn't saying anything Mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense I mean, they're around. Do those people that uh, the other, uh, what were their names again? Todd and the other one. Do they live Terry. on? Yeah, Terry. Do they live right around there or even on the premises? Or Todd does, yes. He lives close. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. Terry's about 30 minutes. Tell me about kicking the cops off the property an hour into a search. <laughs> well, you, you just said it. I heard it. No, go ahead. Say that one. Just put Sean on the phone. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just all fingers are like pointing at the guy. You know, it's so un unreal how he doesn't try to find his wife. And when the cops were searching his property, he kicked them off an hour into the search because they didn't have a search warrant. Who does that? If if my wife came up missing, you'd have to sedate me, oh, and yeah. then we'd have search parties every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. So they came. When, yeah. So how long did it take for somebody to say, oh, she's missing? Was it right after breakfast or kind of like later in the day? Do you know? When? The, the, yeah. They did it the next day um, oh, by her son, Zach. Oh, that's right. It was like uh, they, there was even a time mention. I just can't remember. So it was on the, the 26th. Uh, sixth. Sixth. Yeah, okay. Correct. Yep. Hmm. And they, I think it was like the day after that um, I had texted Dee and I didn't hear anything. I waited a day or two and I texted Amber, the oldest, and I said, hey, you know, is everything okay? I texted your mom. I haven't heard from her. Um, you know, and she had told me about what was going on. And later on in the week, we, um, we had a search, we had a search on the farm that we put together friends and family and Dale did not participate. That's just so classic. You know, I will never forget the look on his face when he came out of the house after he was told that we were leaving. Um, I, I think I told you the the block the country block is their farm my grandparents and then greg's so we searched their farm my grandparents and then the farm across the road and um he, when we were done he came out and there was a lot i mean there was i think 50 people but he never said thank you he it, the look on his face was just stone cold blank wow. i yeah, I, I don't know how to describe it, to be honest with you. I've never, I it wasn't the, a look of somebody that was, I, I mean, I guess there's real, I can't say what a worried husband would look like, but I would, I, I wouldn't yeah. think that would be it. He didn't look, it, he, he certainly didn't look wasn't like, outside looking. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is I, <laughs> I'm trying to think about it. I mean, even if they were looking on my property, which sort of implicates like they're saying I had something to do with it. Wouldn't you just be really freaked out if your spouse was missing and you cared? I mean, you wouldn't even yeah. be thinking about, oh, they're blaming me. You're just trying to find out where the hell one she is. Have, one would really think so, but that was clearly not the case. <laughs> so let me ask you, well, had, so, well, before you get, uh, so Catherine, how are you, how are you guys related to the, uh, like, who, who are you? I'm, I am not blood related. I am. My, our families have been friends for a really long time. Yeah, two hundred years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for almost two hundred. Yes. Um, That's crazy. My, my uh, family farm is in between um, the her family farm and the farm that she purchased before knowing him, and hmm. um, he eventually moved on to with her and where she went missing from. 
Okay, and then uh, Stephanie, you're you're like her best friend for a long time, right? So I worked there for five years, and we became super close. We went on trips um, together, and yeah, we've been friends for okay at least five years. So what what was it you were about to say right before I? said that oh i was just gonna add that dale had the opportunity to serve he did have a soccer game his daughter's soccer soccer game that morning that we did the family search but he did have the opportunity to continue on with the search after he got back but chose that work was more important well also the soccer Mm -hmm. game wasn't important at all comparatively yeah like it's not like Right. That's just yeah. well, and there were yeah. family members that could have taken her. Um, right. Right. So. Hmm. There's yeah. that. Oh yeah. Go ahead. What's the wedding ring part? <laughs> we, I, we can hear him. In the, we can hear him in the background. We can hear him in the background. Yeah. Okay. See if this DD would be like screaming in the phone if this was if the roles were reversed because she is very outspoken. And I am not so much, I'm a reserved person, but my husband's sitting beside me and he's screaming like D would scream. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, sorry that this is going on for you, all of you guys, but I mean, it's a nightmare because there's never really a moment where you're, you know, especially for, you know, like, well, I mean, all of you really, because you're all friends. You, you just, every day you wake up and it's just another day of like, God, you know, it's hard to mm-hmm. just sort of, move on and have your own mm-hmm. world anymore right it's just kind of mm-hmm. yeah so well, hey wait but it is let's... it is i mean that's been that's been a she's been a staple of my entire life and uh yeah not there <laughs> it's, it's a absolute nightmare so what mm-hmm. uh so now that the cat's out of the bag what about the the, the wedding ring I, I couldn't not go back to that all right, <laughs> or is that something you were hoping I would just sort of forget and move on? But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he has possession of her wedding ring. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Well, Supposedly not... she left it. Um. Mm. When she left. I see. So his little. Quote unquote. He thought. You know what he did? He did the whole movie scene in his eyes. He in his mind. He went. Okay. How would she? Have... Okay. She takes her mm-hmm. ring off in dramatic fashion and slams it down on the counter and then she takes her cell phone and purse and heads off into that good night yeah. right that's it's a probably. perfect little story for him yeah mm-hmm. except she would have not done that she would have took it with her and pawned that right sucker right yeah how much is the wedding is it a nice wedding ring I, oh yeah yeah it's okay. nice so it's got it's <laughs> worth a lot so it's worth like you know in a, in a nefarious way keeping it right Oh, I see. Yeah, I, and, listen, and look, like, look, I can hear you whispering in the background. <laughs> and it's like everybody, everybody knows the how much she loved her family, her kids, her grandchildren, her daughter, Lena. There's no way in this world that she would have left any no. of this behind. No, I, tot- I totally agree with you. I can uh, say, too, I've known her for 33 years. I'm I'm 33 years old. I was eight days old when I met Dee. And (laughs) I have seen her face some tough shit in our life. Like, excuse my French. Um, She's not one to run away from problems. So for Dale or anyone else who says, oh, she shit got hot and she took off. Absolutely asinine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I mean, especially she has all these a whole bunch of children, uh, yes. five, and then a whole bunch of grandkids. And you think she's just going to take off and not get a exactly. hold of one, one of them just to say, right. hey. Like, you know, she, yeah. is, she is very much a take the bull by the horns and just do it. She is not one to, she's not, I mean, she's literally a mile from where she was born and raised. She's on the opposite side of the block. Literally. Did yeah. Did you guys know any of you Where guys? Where is she gonna go? Did any of you guys notice any marks on him at all? Like right after that? On him? Yeah. Or just something you can't I didn't uh, get that close to yeah. him to be honest with you. Well it seems like she was somebody that would fight back. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh definitely. Unless he kinda of surprised her in, in a moment. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like a I mean I don't wanna I mean the thing is on this show I just say what I'm thinking, but like 
a strangulation type deal where there isn't going to be a lot of forensic information around. There, you know? there was one um, time that she had told me that he put his hands on her before that I know of. Hmm. Um, and I've seen him get angry with her a lot in, in the office where I worked. And what, what, what was the, can you describe the nature of him putting his hands on her? Well, he grabbed her and threw her against the dresser. Mm. And um, she hit her head pretty bad. Um, and then the next day, as a narcissist would say, that I didn't, I don't recall that happening. Wow. He actually said that? Like, he didn't, was he drink? Did he say well, he was drinking? Well, I didn't or? hear him say that, but that's what she said that he said yes. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm assuming. That. Right. Huh. That's crazy. <laughs> You're inventing it. You're gaslighting me. I never did that. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. It's terrible. So, uh, what else do you think might be valuable for people to know? I know we're getting kind of late. I mean, it's like one that, in the morning. Now. That Dale hated going on vacations, and he's been in Mexico three times. <laughs> uh -huh. And four months. And <laughs> four months. No, yeah. We're not talking like three times in like the last year. We're talking three times in four months. <laughs> right. Wow. He has taken his happy ass to Mexico while the rest of us are stomping around, hanging up signs, trying to find his wife. Have you yeah. noticed yep. that when he's gone to Mexico, it correlated with any investigative moves going on mm -hmm. I mean, you might want to go back and look to if you can figure that out because it'd be really weird if you know since he's this you know the small town good old boy network kind of thing if there was a, a maybe an insider that was saying hey this is what's going down right now and you then know miraculously, honestly I can, say, I can say yes actually it does um but i i can't say what that correlates with actually Hmm. Because it'd be but interesting if he was leaving during times where something was going on, either the property being searched like in October, so. like October 12th. He know? hasn't left during the searches. No, no. No, he needs to be there. That he has not left. But there, I, I can think of something in particular that has been going on, but I... Can't say that? Yes. Correct. Okay. So what about um, the... Um, let me think. Hmm. Well, what do you think he's going there for? Do you think he's setting up a place to be? I, my mind? I, huh? I mean, I don't know, but my mind thinks Taking <laughs> not good things. There, maybe? <laughs> What's that? Taking evidence there, maybe? I don't know. Is he driving there or flying there when he goes? Flying. I I'm think. sure flying. That'd be pretty long um, drive. Yeah. We, don't, we don't know for sure because he's cut off contact, so we don't know if he's going, you know, for... We don't know if he's seeing someone. We don't know if we don't know. So when the um, uh, when the well when the child comes back, the nine year old, do you guys ever have the opportunity to ask about the trips to Mexico or? Then, nope. No. Something we can talk about. Um, so my son goes to the same school as Angelina. They go um, to a private school, and he will go out of his way to drive around to the opposite side of the school to drop her off so that I can't wave to her, see her. I, I, I can't, I, I don't, I, I see him. I get to see him in his mirror and I say nice mm. things sometimes, but I mean, I see him driving in, but I do not, I do not get to see Angelina dropped off. Well, does, um, your, does your son ever talk to her at school or anything? I mean, he's a lot younger than her. Oh, so that would never happen. Yeah. Hmm. Correct. Um, so I don't get to see her at school anymore. And I used to see her almost every day. Um, mm. And I can also, if she used to take eggs to my elderly grandparents, she's not doing that anymore. So we, I have not, I can say personally, I have not seen her or spoken to her um, at all. So she'd been since, pretty much since eight months, like nobody really gets to spend any time with her at all. I personally have seen her once in eight months and that was that no i'm sorry twice i have seen her in the last eight months and how about you uh stephanie um i've had her at my house a few times um but i don't say anything to her because that's not my place 
she's mm. been her and my daughter were really good friends but aren't you so just I sitting tried, there going god i want to know the answer to the question what are you doing in mexico yeah <laughs> oh, man i don't it's, know if i could do it no i just i took her places during the summer with my kids um just to get her out of the house and to help because i know d would would want that um well, how's she doing is she really kind of wondering where her mom is and you know she doesn't really say much um she only yeah she acts normal like a kid which i want her to be when she's here i would never um ask her anything if she says something you know i would i would you know be there for her but she's never said anything hmm, i see like you'd want her to just come forward on her own man yeah. Is there right, anybody that's been able to ask her questions about uh, Mexico, though? I mean, not that that... Mm, maybe there's nothing going on one. in Mexico, but it feels like somebody, like police or somebody would be able to get her on the side and just ask her. You know, thing. I would love to act like the police would do that, but... Um, <laughs> probably not. <clears throat> probably not. Um, but, well, they're not really the police, right? They're the sheriff's department. Yeah. Um, and that's an, that's another subject is... Um, Dale, there's, there was a time, well, a couple times where he has called off searches. They've been at his mm -hmm. house and we're not sure if they were getting too close to something or what's happened. And he has asked them to leave and they have had to come back with search warrants. Hmm. Was, yeah. Cause that's how, first... you know, normal husbands act when they're sheep. Right. I mean, he claims it's that he had to go to work, you know? Yeah. It's so much more important. Right, because he doesn't have employees, or you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is, this is <laughs> yeah. It was an hour into the search, he told him to leave because he had work to do, and then they came back at nine o'clock that night uh, with a warrant. Mm hmm. He probably didn't like that. And he hasn't oh, done. He hasn't right spoken on. or helped in any way of any kind, right? Oh. No. Way. No. No. And uh, I can tell you, Gray, we spend a lot of time, all of us, um, every single one of us, there's um, DS4 adult children and their spouses, and even a lot of their in law families, and Stephanie and her husband, and um, Amy Alexander and myself. And I'm probably missing a lot of people, but there's a whole bunch of us that spend all of our waking time hanging up signs doing yard signs i spend my days off in a part my parents own an ice cream store here in town and i sit there on my only day off to which i don't mind actually i don't want to sound like that you know what i'm putting myself yeah. on. i actually like doing this i like we actually enjoy you know talking to people but you know we're doing this to spread awareness we want to find D. meanwhile we are not seeing any of that happening from that side of town what about his other children the adults are they i haven't seen them do anything either except make a facebook post and see that's interesting because the he probably knew that they'd back him but he has this one child that they have together and that's the one he was a little bit nervous about so he has to kind of keep her at bay not allow her to talk to anybody mm -hmm. right because all of you guys like you know friends and family members they're all out there trying to help and mm -hmm. uh, but none of his adult kids are because they know what the implication is. well that's weird too that they wouldn't be helping just mm -hmm. in general to help find well, here's this my thing. Uh, prove me wrong go get those signs out there prove it prove the theories wrong guys there's no excuse that the, that he should be helping. There's no excuse. Exactly. Not exactly. one. Yeah. There's uh, I think there, man, there's just so, there's so many cases that we've covered that have such a similar feel to it. It's bizarre. He has no Go ahead. What was that? He has no concern. <laughs> he hasn't since day 1. That uh, first week in the office, there was no there, it he didn't act like I guess a normal, I don't know what that means, but like a normal husband who would be missing his wife, there was no concern that first week. Yeah, and like it, was zero. Really, it was really stressful that my wife worked there for a month and a half. After, after that happened, oh, man. 
you know, not knowing if he was going to lose it one day, you know, or any, I mean, horrible. That. Wow, that must have been a nightmare. Yeah. Every day going in there. It is. It is. It's my and it's it's mind blowing that the that I I just don't understand why the sheriff doesn't seem to think that that's an issue, and her brother, her seventy one year old brother, is literally running himself ragged trying to do their job their elected officials that were paying and i mean he he's he should be he works retired night and day yeah he well, works well, night I, well and i just day. saw when i just saw the november the sheriff even in november still saying stuff like well we're telling if people you if you see her out there you know mm -hmm. I mean, what a joke i that loved a, i literally loved that you said that because those words have came out of my mouth oh yeah <laughs> i'm like oh yeah she's at macy's just keep an eye out for her <laughs> yeah right absolutely ridiculous yeah. you know yeah but i mind-blowing so absolutely my, it's maybe, so frustrating maybe you guys can say tell what tell us a little bit about her you know what, you know what is she like sounds like she's a really great person fun to be around huh. She was such a giving person. Oh, my God. The biggest giving heart. Um, she was fierce. She was um, hard-headed. She was compassionate. compassionate about her family. Um, she was such an amazing person with a huge giving heart. Amazing. She always wanted to help people. That was her. If, if, you, if I could say anything about her, she always helped everyone. Mm hmm if it were any of us, she would be screaming from the rooftops. Like she would yes. be like, I mean, she would probably be like yelling in the sheriff's mm -hmm. face. She, she like would, she would be like your, her brother. She, she'd be like Greg, but yelling, right? Time yes. Yeah. 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 She, <laughs> yeah. she would have been like, she'd be Greg, but like, she would be like, if she would have saw that interview, she would have walked into his office and sat down and she, she would have been mm -hmm. yelling at him. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, she yeah. she would have been like, At what what was that about? You know, Dustin um, wrote in the he, Dustin wrote in the chat. He says he's done nothing but try and justify D being gone. That's what he said. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly the whole time. That's all yep. Dale has done is trying to justify himself, basically, and why he's yep. acting like that. And that's mm -hmm. what it boils down to. But no, D was. This was D. My parents work a lot and I mean a lot a lot. And everyone you know, every once in a while, you know, I need I needed a mom and I would call her and it, I would just say something really vague like oh, my mom, she just wasn't listening and let me tell you that woman would come after me. I'm not like in a mean way, but just your mother works so hard, Catherine, and da 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 da, -da. and let me tell you what, the sun shined out of my mom's ass as far as that woman was concerned. <laughs> and um she just she just loved so and just said it like it was with a fire you couldn't you can't even replicate it was just who she was mm -hmm. you know and she wanted to make sure that I knew how much I should appreciate my mom even though she wasn't listening to me in that exact second you know because um, she's like, oh, my gosh, you don't understand. And da, da, da. I'm like, it's okay. Wow. Yeah, I'm not mad at her. It's okay, you know. See, that's weird. She that that, was, I mean, that little anecdote, that little story right there probably encapsulates how, you know, awesome she is. Because, exactly. because she didn't just sort of, she didn't just sort of, you know, try to, hey, yeah, wow, your mom, you know, and try to be this. There's so many people out there that would use that as an opportunity to make themselves better. You know. Oh God, no! Yeah. Uh, no, see, that was no. never her. Absolutely yeah, not. Nope. Never her she, intention. No. Absolutely not. And it was she. She was she was like the best hype man in the world. I mean, she. <laughs> I went through. Um, I adopted my stepdaughter. She like held held my hand through it basically because my again my mom was gone a lot and she was I mean she'd text me call me make sure everything's okay she's commenting on Facebook like she just she was that that person that was there and you know she has a million things going on she's got four adult kids that and three of them have kids you know she's got empty businesses to run but she's making sure everybody knows she's there for them yep that's mm. exactly right ah, that's so cool 
Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, all of us are sorry for all of your losses because I mean I'm, I'm not feeling confident at all that she's literally in Mexico or Jamaica. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. we all really wish that was um, that you know the, the, we all that wanted that to be yeah, yeah, but we we know her well enough. Yeah. yeah. She never left without, she would never leave without her own vehicle or her daughter. Well, I mean, just that story you just told a second ago, that isn't somebody that would just take off and never speak to a human again. Oh, nope. God. You see what I'm saying? Like, she goes out of her way to make time for almost everybody. It just wasn't going to be, uh, I, I don't know. That just it would be a different sense. theory if her daughter was with her, but her daughter is yeah. not. Right. Yeah. Her youngest. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird too, man. Yeah. I don't even think she would do that either, though. She would have contacted. That would make it even a worse story, I think, because she would definitely have contacted one of the family members and said, "Hey, but you can't tell a soul. This is what, this is what I'm doing," and or some, you know, whatever. Even if she Mm -hmm. had her daughter, she would have said something to somebody, somewhere. Yep. Right. Right. Because she's just that kind of person. So. Yep. I think it just would have made it a much more sinister story. I mean, it's sinister the way it is, but if if the daughter was missing, then something would have happened to her too. So thankfully, yeah. she's, right. your your uh, she actually D was thoughtful and smart enough to you know we don't know what would have happened if she was still there and that same level of fight happened. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I don't know. Maybe he, you know he probably cares about her I'm you know I'm sure something some I don't know I, I don't know if, if he has a history of being like a sociopath or psycho or anything like that but uh, I don't know him I can't give a personal reference in the 33 years I've known D I can count on one hand the amount of conversations I've had with Dale Warner so I he's can't very, comment on that hmm. he's a very quiet very quiet person um hard yeah. very hard to read yeah well Thankfully, Dee protected her daughter by not having her there, and that way she avoided that situation and is now, you know, really safe in terms of, um, like, everybody's watching now. So mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I'm sure you guys could have a million more things, but... Uh, maybe what we'll probably do is uh, we're going to have Greg come on, but I might do something... I don't know. I might do something tomorrow where if other people or you have other things you want to say, you want to call back in. But uh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a hold of Greg, and then maybe Dustin will come on on a show or two. Sure. As well, but I think it just needs to get keep building momentum and get more out there. I'm kind of surprised this isn't one of the stories that's sort of a bigger right. uh, nation story, you know, national type We've story. We've been trying. We've been working our little tails off isn't it weird how some cases just become big and some don't and there's no rhyme or reason at the time you know not, yeah i th- don't i don't get it at all but this one is you know it's it's it, it, you know it's interesting too and it's also you know it's pretty uh, common type of a situation but it's just another one of those crazy injustices where you know this person definitely at least knows exactly what happened and mm-hmm. they're just wandering around just doing their own things heading off to mexico yeah. you know. well, the simple fact that they haven't even named a person of interest or you know they've questioned him but haven't interrogated him they i understand that they can't get a warrant for a polygraph test but why aren't we at least trying to push it like there's so many things that i don't understand and oh. that's why it needs to be pushed out. Well, you know how it worked, right? Who can make it happen? Oh, here's how it worked: is uh, Dale told the sheriff he goes, "I had nothing to do with it," and he said, right. hey, that, "That's yeah. good. Hey, that's okay. good enough for me. That's yeah. Yeah. let's consider that a polygraph test." Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> right, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Well, at least we know that for future reference, right? Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> just man. Just looking at well, it, like, when he was talking, it really bothered me when he that last time when he said after we already knew all this other stuff 
because that means mm-hmm. by the time he said that, um, Greg had already given his uh, speech, and then he still comes out and says that about her walking around somewhere, you know. Just Re- you didn't. You got to read the bottom part of the Dateline article because that's going to get you going even worse, my friend. Oh, really? That's the one I was reading. Oh, I maybe I no, didn't you haven't it. read that one yet. No, you haven't read that one yet. You got to read that one because <laughs> okay. the bottom part of it, he contradicts himself three times in one sentence, and I, that's got to be a record. Oh, Dale did. No, Kendall. Oh, the oh the uh, oh Dale the hasn't sheriff. spoke to anybody. Yeah, the sheriff. No, he doesn't talk to anybody. But yeah, Sheriff Kendall. Okay, but I, did I start reading the Dateline article because I thought I had that one. You started yeah, you to. Read, yeah. Okay, all right. Started to, yeah. All right. Well, I'll definitely make sure to get to the bottom of that one. But uh, yeah, I really appreciate you guys coming on. I'm sorry you're having to go through this, and uh, we'll just keep keep on trucking. And I hope I, yeah, you know, I'm, well. I'm, I'm, I don't want to well, you know, affect anything. So no, um, we're, I think that we're, we're making good momentum. We've really, we all appreciate what you've done today because this is the first time we've honestly felt heard mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, uh, we've been working really, really, really hard for a lot of months. So, um, oh. I, I do know that, that the pot's boiling cause, uh, somebody, somebody got, uh, nerves big enough to approach my dad in the wild. So, uh, we can I mean, you can talk to Dustin about that because he also spoke to my dad. So that can be that can be story time with Dustin if you speak to him. Okay. Um, so that you can yeah. go there if you if you wish. But that that okay. that was proof right there. That that actually gave put a little bit more wind under our sails because that, that that tells us right there that we know we are we're doing exactly what we're supposed to be. So. Yeah, I mean, yep. I think I think what you're putting out there is is going to really, you know, start bringing a lot more interest to, and um, I'll definitely keep talking about it now. Um, I I feel bad that I'm like the only, you know, you, the, the first time you felt like your voices are heard after mm-hmm. eight, eight months. That sounds eight months ridiculous. Eight me. months. Yep. Uh, but yeah. I'm also glad that I'm able to do that, and so let's just let's just keep doing it. Yeah, I love it. I, I don't want this person to get away with it, and I just I want justice to be served. Yep. And I don't want him to think we're he thinks that we're all, that we're fooled when we're not, <laughs> oh, or he's fooled us yeah, and we're no. not. I mean, if he, I, I tell you what, I mean, if I had a dollar for every guy that cases that are just like this one, very similar, I, I would mm-hmm. been retired a long time ago. There is just. Mm-hmm. There are so many like this one, and they all oh, think yeah. they all think they're so smart. Like they've got this. Well, look at I'm doing it a little different than that other guy. When it, at the same time they all like there's another one, Patrick. I think his name was like Frazy, not not Swayze, yeah. but Patrick Frazy. There's another whole another case. Same thing. He never talked to the police at all. Uh, he actually went over to her during uh, I think right around Thanksgiving or Chris Thanksgiving I think and killed her put her body way up in the mountains and he, then he went back and just acted like not in the mountains but just burned her in a fire actually and then he went and, and it was on a, a big farm like property i mean it's actually that one's very similar as well except she lived off site in that one but he just never said anything to the police never did anything and uh, i tried he just thought he was going to get away with it and after months uh somebody came forward and boom he's toast but uh you know, he got found guilty in that case, but yep. So they don't they don't we get actually, away with it. You know. No, they don't. Eventually, everyone gets caught. There was um, mm-hmm. a case very similar that we all actually. Um, I think most of us watched it. I don't know if Seth did, but it was 1985. It was a surgeon killed his wife in their apartment, pieced her up, put her in a bag, and threw her out of an airplane and. It took them wow. 15 years to get a conviction. So 2000, so fast forward to the year 2000, they finally got a grand jury to indict him. He got 20 years, took it all the way to his parole hearing and finally admitted it then just because he wanted parole. Wow, but when, it seems like once you admit it, yeah, but that's part of it though, right? It, that's once part you, of it yeah, because he had to that. prove that he was, <laughs> yeah. See, if I was the, one of the people on the board though, once he admitted, I go, oh, so you did do that. 
Okay, ten more yes, years. Well, you can turn your butt back around, buddy. I know. That's that's what I would do. Who cares if you're admitting it? You know? Exactly. God. Yeah. yeah, that that's part of the rehabilitation process. It's realizing you did something wrong, I guess. But no, he <laughs> Right. It is what it is. But yeah, that it's a very, very similar case that we a lot of us watched because it was a similar personality and a similar situation and we're hoping that um mm-hmm. Doesn't take 15 years to figure out what happened here. Yeah. No, nah, I think if you get some different eyes on it. I mean, it's weird that the FBI has been in there, but they didn't. I mean, what happened with that? They were involved, aren't they? Still involved? They're, you know? they, they're they're taking evidence, or they they're doing they're helping, they're assisting with hmm. what they're being asked to assist with. It it, like, that's how yeah. I understand it, anyway. It seems like they would overcome the incompetency of the sheriff, though. You, you know, would think so. <laughs> yeah. But I guess maybe they just are there assisting the incompetence in this case. That's possible. Yeah. That's totally yeah. possible. And maybe they're not totally aware of it because the sheriff's not allowing them to see that. Hmm. hmm. Un- unreal. I mean, one would think that it would be. I mean, you guys saw it after reading about two news articles, but. Hmm. I wonder if. Uh, I don't know. You guys, you ever want to. Maybe uh, Greg should contact the FBI directly himself and tell them what's going on and see if that changes anything. So I do, we do have a lot of things in the works right now. Um, I've reached out to like a lot of like local politicians and like we've gotten a lot of different routes that we can go. Um, so we basically have plan A, B, C and uh, like a, we have a, we have a bunch. <laughs> um, Greg is definitely Mr. Mr. Legal um, investigative. Um, yeah, no, he seems like we're gonna get it done. done. We're gonna get it done. Don't worry. I I, I go on about four hours of sleep anyway, so <laughs> okay. All right. You know, when you grow up a farm kid, you just you don't you don't need sleep. <laughs> so we just we're gonna. <laughs> We're gonna not sleep until these these justice is served. That's how that's gonna go. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Just naps every once in a while. Yeah. Not even that. We, you know, we we were bred for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. All right. Well, I'm I'm gonna let you guys go. Actually, get some of that sleep since it's one thirty. Although you probably <laughs> won't. You'll stare at the ceiling. But hey, you know what? Give it a shot. Take some deep oh, breaths. There you go. <laughs> and and okay. Uh, but anyways, I appreciate you coming on, and let's have, why don't you guys come back on again at sometime soon. Maybe think of things that you, you didn't mention. Maybe you see if you can puzzle, uh, put some pieces together of some sort. And I don't mm-hmm. know. I think it's just useful to have it be talked about, and, mm-hmm. uh, and that allows other people to hear about it, and then they talk to somebody else, and then it kind of spreads around, becomes bigger, puts pressure on people. And things start happening when pressure mm-hmm. happen- happens, right? Definitely. All right. Well, thanks, thanks for awesome. having us. We very much appreciate you, sir. Well, thank you. And I'm really sorry that you're having to go through this again. It's a nightmare. So. Yes, it is. All right. Well, we'll keep in touch, and we'll talk to you soon, all right? Yes, thank, thank you. you. And what was the guy in the background? Have a good one. <laughs> Sean. Yeah, Sean. <laughs> we, we heard you a lot. We heard you. It was good, though. It was good. Right. You added some good stuff. Here. Yeah, I don't know what I can say. And then Sean's like, <laughs> yeah. thanks. Hey, Tell thanks. About the ratings. But hey, hey, Sean, thanks, man. You got some. You got some good. Senior, you got some good info, information for us out there. All right, All right. you're welcome. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot. All right. All right, bye. 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 Recording stopped. Yeah, that was awesome. You guys are uh, man. This what a what a amazing group of friends she has too. I mean, my God, <laughs> wouldn't you all love in a situation like D is in? You know, I, I don't think I my personally I don't think she's alive. But to know that you have friends like that backing you up in the background, my God, that's just uh, it's freaking awesome. Unbelievable. Anyways, thank you guys all for being here tonight. Uh, definitely, I'm glad we stayed on for some extra time because I thought that was really valuable information. 
and um, now, now we're going to have to, we're I mean I I feel like I want to I, mean, I was about to say have to but I mean like have to like internally I have to continue sort of regularly you know not every single day because there's a lot of other cases out there but regularly continue to uh, you know keep going over this case and getting new information and trying to put all the pieces together and get it get it out there to more people uh, man un unreal what do you guys think about that it's weird too because you know like right now we only had you know maybe 250 to 300 people watching during that time and that was probably a thousand times more interesting than the summer wells crap that there's no information that's continuing over and over and over with a thousand people staring like maniacs at the screen and there's nothing so anyways i appreciate you all for being here tonight and uh it's awesome All right, let me get to the, uh, this other screen over here. Ah, God, read the article. Yeah. I don't know which one it was. Was it the last one? If it's the last one, I'll do it. I don't know what, what the title was. And I see an NBC one. Is that the Dateline one? Oh, uh, yeah, I must... Well... NBC's Dateline, right? It doesn't say Dateline, it just says NBC in it. Yeah, that's, that's what this is, though, so. All right. Ah, oh, crap. Man, are you going to send in a super chat, Saxon Fox Nanny? Well, we'll start it up right now, as soon as you send that in. <laughs> Jesus. Man, I've been on here for four hours and 13 minutes, and I did an hour and 10 minute show earlier. Okay, here we go. Let, let, we'll do it. Yeah, I see. I think it's this one right here, because Dateline shows up in here about 50 times. Okay, there you go. Awesome. All right, hold on. What's going on? I thought that was so... I, I, it makes me sad that that was the first time that they felt like somebody was listening to them. That's ridiculous. I mean, I'm glad that I'm the one that they felt like that right now and we gave them the little platform, but how could that be? I mean, it's been eight months. Ridiculous. All right, let me go. Let me zip through this one. There we go. Greg Hardy was in college when his family got a big surprise, a little bundle of joy. I think we already went through. Let me go to the down in this section here. All right. Greg told Dateline that Dee's husband, Dale, reported back later. Let me start with this part here. Greg said Raquel, that's one of the, uh, the daughters of um, Dee. And I think, yeah, that was one that with with Dustin went over to have breakfast. So Raquel and her family continued to make breakfast. There we go. Now, oh, hell, I got to go back up to here. Okay, let's go up to right here. <laughs> okay. Okay. On Sunday, April 25th, 2021, one of Dee's daughters, Raquel, stopped by her mother's house with her husband and daughter. Okay. Uh, around 9 a.m., so that was Dustin, Raquel, and their daughter. So they got there at 9 a.m., and 52-year-old D was nowhere to be found during this period of time when uh, they were working on their house. It was being totally remodeled, so it wasn't livable, uh, Greg told Dateline about Raquel's family. So they were living in another location, and they would stop at my sister's for breakfast. So apparently Raquel and Dustin, they were having a house remodeled, so they were living um, somewhere else, but they would go over to Dee's house to have breakfast. So they were living in another location, and they would stop by my sister's for breakfast on most Sunday mornings. Uh, Greg said when they got there, they noticed Dee wasn't in the house, but as they typically did, they went and started making breakfast. 
They saw one of her vehicles sitting at the office, which is only about maybe a thousand feet from the house, so they assumed she was at the office. Raquel and her family, I wonder which one of those is the office. Maybe, I don't know, maybe over here, something like that. Or over here, a thousand feet though, that's kind of a... Let me just see how, see that, no, there isn't a thousand feet, even here. <laughs> that's 716 feet right there, I don't know, that doesn't make sense. Um, hold on, let me turn that off. Okay. Now Raquel and her family continued to make breakfast, but around 10 a.m., they walked over to the office to check in on Dee, assuming that that's where she was. Dee was not at the office. Greg said... Raquel then called his, uh, wait, wait, Raquel? I thought Raquel was the, uh, then called his wife. Greg said Raquel, that should be, is that right? I don't even know if that's right right there. Because Raquel's a, isn't that mom? Wait, Greg said Raquel then called his wife, Shelly. Uh, I don't get it. Is that confusing to anybody else? It doesn't make sense to me. Greg said Raquel, who's the wife of Dustin, then called his wife. Oh, his wife, Greg's wife, Shelly. Okay, God. Yeah, so Greg said Raquel then called his wife, Shelly, and asked if she had seen, had seen D. Shelly had not and called Greg to ask if he had. Okay, so... Raquel called Greg's wife Shelly. If she, if she had seen, Raquel called Greg's wife Shelly to ask if she had seen D, and she said she didn't. And then she called Greg as well. All right. So Greg told Dateline the last that he last texted with D on Thursday, April twenty second, three days before she went missing, but hadn't seen or heard from her since. Greg told Dateline that Dee's husband, Dale, reported back later that day that he had left the house at 6.30 a.m. and Dee was laying on the couch snoring. Greg told Dateline that Dee's husband, Dale, reported back later that day that he had left the house at 6.30 a.m. Oh, yeah, so she was sleeping on the couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greg and his family rushed to set up a small search team and began sweeping the grounds of Dee's property for any signs of her. That time of year in Michigan, there's no foliage, Greg said, so you could get a great vision everywhere. Hmm, in, in uh, April? I don't know, it seemed like there'd be foliage all over the place. Uh, Raquel and Shelley also searched inside the house, so... Greg's wife came over and started searching with Dustin's wife, Raquel, also searched inside the house, Greg said. One of the things that my wife noticed when she was in the house is that there were tissues from crying or blowing your nose everywhere. Later that same day, the family filed a missing person report with the Lenawee County Sheriff's Office. Sheriff uh, Troy uh, Bevere confirmed a dateline that Dee was reported missing on April 25th by three of her adult children. Dee was last seen at her residence on Munger Road in Franklin Township, Sheriff Beaver said. She was last seen by a family friend the evening of the 24th, and then she was last seen by her husband on the 25th in the early morning hours. When asked if there were any security cameras, yep, I, I finally figured that out, Dustin. took me a few seconds, <laughs> a few minutes, though. Uh, when asked if there were any security cameras at Dee's residence, Sheriff Beaver told Dateline that there are security cameras there, there, are there, and we are looking at them. 
we sent them off to actually the FBI is reviewing them. From the Lanawi County Sheriff's Office initial review of the footage, Sheriff Beaver told Dateline that there was nothing that jumped out at us. Well, you probably weren't even watching it. As far as being able to definitively prove anything one way or another. <laughs> okay, yeah. So nothing jumped out at you, but you are saying there's things on there. We just, you know, it doesn't prove anything. Well, uh, keep the damn tape because there's probably going to mean there mean a hell of a lot more when the right people put things together. Uh, if I was a family, I'd ask for a damn copy of those those tapes. Make sure you got a copy. Greg told Dateline, at the best of his knowledge, that there was a business-related dispute between D, her husband, and one or two of her employees. Sheriff Beaver, uh, Bever, Bevere confirmed that there was an argument between D and her husband, and I'm not sure exactly which employees, but it is well documented, and it has been followed up by the detectives. And, and here's how it went. Dale, did you get in an argument? Yes, we did. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's see. Greg said that when he asked Dee's husband on the evening of April 25th if he knew what had happened, he said that Dee just left. He mentioned that she took a travel bag, a purse, her phone, and her curling iron. And here's, hey, let me ask you this, everybody. Is there a, any guy in the world that would even know any of those items right there? Okay. Like, I would never know that my uh, wife would take a curling iron or hairspray. The reason he might know that, though, is because he packed that bag to make it look like she left. Right? So he, he's immediately, hey! Yeah, travel bag, uh, curling iron, and her hairspray, for God's sakes. Come on. There was information early on in the investigation that it's not unusual for her to do that. Uh, let's see. There was information in the investigation that's not unusual for her to do that, Sheriff Bevere told Dateline. There were theories that, in fact, that's what happened. Greg doesn't believe the theories. Yeah, but when she probably would leave before, it would be to a friend's house to get away from the person. Greg doesn't believe the theories. There are two things, and he's wondering, you know, like, here's the thing is Dale's out there going, man, I, I was so good at packing the curling iron and the, oh, and the hairspray. How come they're not, they're not buying it? The, well, the family isn't. The sheriff bought it hook, line, and sinker, but... Uh, let's see. Uh, Sheriff Bevere told Dateline investigators have looked into the possibility that someone might have picked D up and taken her somewhere. Yeah, 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 that's right. Did you check her phone out? Did it, did it call anybody? Her bank account has been flagged. Everything has been flagged, the sheriff said. There's been no activity on her bank account. We had the FBI assist us with you, with, you know, did she fly and... We can't find any evidence of that. We, we also checked her cell phone early on, everybody, and it didn't have any phone calls to a soul after 11 o'clock, but we're still thinking that some, by some miracle, somebody just happened to be driving by that she knew and she flagged them down. Yeah. Sheriff Bevere told Dateline that since D went missing, there have been quite a few searches for her. Let's see, up here. Dateline reached out to Dale to get his recollection of events, but has not yet received her. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Sheriff Bevere told Dateline that since D went missing, there have been quite a few searches for her. There were helicopter searchers, foot patrol searches. There were numerous canine searches, including a cadaver dog. There were drone searches, ground-penetrating radar searches with two different systems, Excavations, there were, I mean, their excavations on the property is hypocritical to him saying, well, if you see her walking around out there, you know, because that does mean you're thinking that she's on that property. There were searches of medical records, finance, social media, all that stuff was searched. 
Yeah. Except none of that has anything to do with a psycho just killing a wife in a rage. Throughout all these searches, Sheriff Bevere said the only thing they were able to locate was a set of keys belonging to D. When asked if authorities had a person or people of interest in D's disappearance, he told Dateline, really, we haven't ruled anything out. We're trying to keep an open mind and not rule anybody out and not focus on anyone in particular, but kind of focus on everyone in particular. Let's see. Uh, Greg just wants to find his sister. As the months have passed, he said he continued doing everything in his power to help find her. I worked on it every single day, absolutely every day, either running down some information on tips, trying to speak to anyone involved, he said. Some of that time I spent getting conservator appointed uh, for my sister, which is a court action, Greg said. I'm the, the guy who petitioned for that to protect my sister's business positions. Greg said the conservatorship has been in place for about four months now, which means there is now a representative of the court who virtually stands in as my sister in any business matters or on personal matters as well. The Maui County Sheriff's Office continues to work behind the scenes on the case and held another search of the Munger Road home and grounds on October 11th. We worked with the FBI and Michigan State Police, Sheriff Bivier said. There were specific locations identified around the area of the residence that were searched with the dogs and sonar, but nothing was found that would help locate D. There's been extensive searches by them, but the problem is that it's an extensive area, Greg told Dateline. They've made concerted efforts. Don't get me wrong, but they'll still have, they still haven't come up with anything. Dee's family has taken to social media with a Facebook group called Justice for Dee to bring awareness to her case and share updates. Uh, I know lots of people in the community, but there have been, uh, let's see, there have been people I don't even know that have come forward in support of Dee and the campaign, Justice for D, Greg said, there's been several people, including my nieces and nephews, who have worked very hard at this public awareness campaign, which has been tremendous and is still growing. What, what are you guys talking about? What's the red flag? What's the red flag? What do you, what do you, oh yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people circulating Justice for D signs, and we're encouraged that, Sheriff Beaver told, Bevere told Dateline. We want justice for D as well as we would love to get a tip that would send us in a direction that we can really uncover more information. Greg is also extremely thankful for the support from the community. I try to thank people all the time as much as I can. I do really appreciate that. I mean, he's a really nice person. I mean, we, I mean, just in that little short call, even, you know, found out that I went to University of Oregon, graduated Oregon State, and he was like, oh, well, the Ducks are pretty good. And then we, I said, well, yeah, I mean, uh, I went to both schools, so I should be a platypus. He, he thought that was pretty funny. The support has really been unbelievable. The hope is that by spreading the word the right person to come forward to help locate his sister. Dee was an extremely loving mother, a loving grandmother, a great person who would be willing to help anyone anytime. And her, miss and her missing like this is just so out of character that it's astounding to all of us that know her well, Greg told Dateline. Dee is approximately five foot four, weighs 135 to 140 pounds. She has brown hair, which at the time, I mean, so the thing is, this stuff here, that's what she looks like, but of her disappearance had blonde highlights. Anyone with information, call 517-263-0524. Yeah. I guess in this case, you know, the sheriff considers Dale 
the quintessential family member and of course would be telling the absolute truth and all the rest of the people the friends the family everybody else that thinks something else is going on they're all wrong but Dale the one guy who was in the argument who wasn't helping in any way at all search or do anything is the one guy to be believed does that make sense to anybody at all well I sure as hell hope not all right, everybody, that is going to do it for me. Uh, and by the way, I would have done it anyways, uh, Sack and Fox Nanny, but I thought, hey, here's a chance to get a couple uh, more super chats. For uh, for those of you who are out there who don't know, on this channel, we do a lot of, uh, last year we donated $42,000, uh, 45000 total from the channel to charity, 22000 to a DNA fund, 5000 to three different charities, uh, all true crime related and so yes it does help my channel out but it also helps the charities out because I donate over 50% of the net income on the channel and that's why we make a difference on this channel um, every single month all the way through the year we make a difference all right so I want to thank everybody that came on here tonight and and spoke and uh, you guys are awesome I think it was, uh, was it, uh, I want to make sure I get the names right. Are you still communicating with me? Yeah, so it was Catherine, Steph, and uh, Dustin in the chat. And then what was the, the husband in the background's name again? <laughs> he was brief. Hey, thanks, Amber Maiden. Hey, thanks so much. Yeah, it's it's just, it's, it's amazing, right, Amber? I mean, I don't know what's going on. The true crime world is really just a... Uh, it's, something's wrong with it. But thank God we're doing it the right way, and we're just going to continue to keep on going. Sean. Yeah, and Sean out there. Thanks, Beholder. Hey, look at that. Beholder's got a normal face. <laughs> wow. Holy crap, everybody. Stop the presses. Beholders has a normal looking face on there. Yep. And there goes Zozo with her 45 minute later. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Yeah, too late. Wow, Dustin just pulled a Zozo. That was pretty good. If you don't know what that means, it means 20 minutes after everybody else already answered it, she'll come in with the answer. And she's not on rewind mode. That's the thing. <laughs> he... He actually won up you on that one, Zozo. That was pretty good. Oh, yeah. All right, so tomorrow in the uh, AM, or, you know, sometime in the, I don't know, noonish, I'll do the other case. And I'll just give her her own video, and then we'll come back on later, and who knows where that'll go. All right, so thank you to uh, Truth Sleuth, Eugenie, Kathy Frydenmaker, Zozo, Jessica Schubach, Cheyenne R., One Sly Angel, Tina Susser, Tani Lee, Mary Glaviano, Your Gypsy, Jessica Schubach, Chrissy, Delva Johnson, Sack and Fox Nanny, Billy Juliana, Amber Maiden, uh, Kathy Frydenmaker, Mag, Mountain Jam 71, R.M. Bell, Lane S., Courtney Robb, Tani Lee, Carolina Girl, Your Gypsy, uh, Billy Juliana, Georgina Stoliker, Shogun Love, Michelle Sakura Griggs, Anthony B, Eugenie, Quietly Frozen, Cindy Lynn, TTGO Tracy, uh, Pebs W. Oh, and Quietly Frozen was a quadruple 
cat eye. So thank you. And sorry about your mother uh, with COVID. That sucks. I mean, it's just got a lot of freaks that are, uh, you know, not doing that well. So everybody do the, the prayer hands for all the freaks out there. All right. For, you know, getting healthy and good again. Uh, not good. I mean, healthy again. You're good people. Cindy Lynn, T.T. Joe, Tracy, Pebs W, Sack and Fox, Nanny, Jen Richards, and Amber Maiden. Cat Eye at the very end. Thank you. And uh, what else we got? Um, we did have... Oh, we got a... No, I set a payment in. <laughs> it wasn't a, me. All right, hold on. Uh, we're... Hold on. I was reading one from Incognito. All right, well, that's it. So anyways, I hope you guys thought that was an interesting show. I, I thought it was got really interesting. It was weird how it, the flow of it. We were just kind of going over it. Uh, Dustin was in the chat, and then we started asking questions, and then we got phone calls, and it was just really awesome how we got people to um, come on and talk, and Dustin in the uh, chat. It was uh, really useful information. And hopefully what we need to do is just sort of put it all together like in a, you know, a concise timeline on a sheet of paper where it's all there. Um, I don't know. I didn't see it in there. Oh, yeah, there it is. Well, it's weird. It didn't say it the way it normally reads it. Well, thank you. Beholder was that a uh, stream labs one Because I, I don't have it the video is the only thing that shows up it doesn't pop up in the but I don't have the videos on But thank you beholder Yeah So anyways, let's I hope we can can help in some way somehow get some justice for this family, I mean, it's just, what a nightmare. Eight months of just run around by just a Yahoo sheriff like that. Wow. You know, at least they got the, you know, the FBI got in there, which is interesting, you know. Like, it's sort of a contradictory type of thing where you got the FBI in there, but you're just looking at it like uh, just a totally incompetent person. Unbelievable. All right, so thank you guys all for being here tonight. And uh, if you are a channel member, maybe you can head over to Discord and chat for a while. All right, so we'll see you guys later. And um, again, as I always say, everybody, until next time, be safe out there. Yeah, I've been doing hey, Green, are we going to do the, uh, the wrap at the end? And no, you do not. Time. I have not it's seen been four hours and 39 minutes. Six that hours a show. A crime dissector. Gee, Ray. I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get ya on a stretcher if you try and play me like an old projector. Crime sector is my nectar. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, free connector. And I'm always gonna be a pup protector. Fool deflector, interceptor. On his pector, with all respect, ya. Just remember, I've a temple fucking check, ya. I have no agenda, I'm no pretender, and I'll serve it to you straight without the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. All right, everybody, talk to you. It's the house! <laughs> yeah. Anyways, thank you guys very much. We will see you guys tomorrow, and be safe out there. Be safe out there, everybody. Oh, my God.
God. <clears throat> now my voice doesn't even work. <laughs> bye bye.